show up in set in my super suit and be like, <laughs> what are we doing? That guy hits that guy. <laughs> Pow, oh yeah. So this is 10 years of comics. What? We're gonna check out some comics of our own right now, so yep. we'll dive into some stuff. Let's check them out. Let's do it. Man, we missed it by just a second. Just a second, and a yeah. great thing would have happened second. on the air. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about some inside jokes here. It's Collider Live, everybody. Welcome back to the show. It is a Wednesday, and the crew is in full force. We've got Mr. Josh McCoogan here. What's up, buddy? Doing all right. Mr. Yeah. Rock Riley sitting over Hello. there. And she was almost locked out of the studio. I don't know what she did. She, oh, oh, I almost knocked over her coffee. That's, that's Riley's right. fault, though. That's not yeah, on you. The first thing that. is my yeah. fault, 1,000%. Yeah, the second this. thing was that's not, not my fault. That's not that was my fault. No, you locked yourself out, though, on the way out. I didn't lock myself what out. What happened? You pressed the lock, and you closed the door. We had no idea. Yeah, you locked yourself uh -huh, out. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> did you? What happened? You so, is that my good joker laugh? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that. Look, this is a stacked... Show today. Yeah. yeah, like holy yeah. crap. Yeah, stack show because I'm freaking out. Me too. Listen, we're because we're gonna be talking about this Joker trailer for sure. The Joker holy shit. I know. Holy I know. shit! Uh, yeah. The reaction for that one, myself and Roka did this morning. Roxy ran out to watch it. She was almost late for the show, but she wasn't. She wasn't. I, I was. Nah, because the comic book shopping trailer saved you. Oh, that's yeah. what happened. Yeah, you got saved. Otherwise, we would have made a whole bit out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have locked you out for at least five minutes. Well, because mm -hmm. I just can't handle. Really that's my jam. Yeah. And this morning when I woke up, I didn't. You don't want to be uninformed. Uh, oh, yeah. that could kill. If you guys were talking about the Joker trailer and I hadn't like, seen what? it. Uh, huh? What? Yeah. Is that what I sound like? Sometimes. Yes. <laughs> huh? huh? What? I'm confused. Wait, hold on. What? What? Wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? What? Huh? Say hold it again. Wait, wait, what? Huh? <laughs> we could. <laughs> <laughs> That's in every reaction. bit we've ever done in the show. That's your reaction. Ever. Christian, I do an abandoned check. Wait, what? Start telling me a story. Okay, so it's me, uh, Jessica Chastain. W and wait, wait. Jessica, wait, huh? What? So, so it's, it's me, Jessica? No, no, you? I'll be me. Wait, why are you with Jessica Chastain? Better. I'm confused. Okay, better. Yeah, okay better. so, like so I, was, yeah. I was at a bar in West Hollywood. Oh, you Which Roxy? bar? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, when the are Belmont. we talking? I'll do me. Roxy, um, let him tell the story. Let, let, let him tell the okay, story. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it was, uh, <laughs> it was like an evening. It was like a Tuesday evening or something. Oh, like. on Tuesday. Why didn't you hit me up? Roxy Stryer. Roxy Stryer. Let him tell the story. Right, so, so. It's, it's me and Jessica Chastain. <laughs> Did you actually meet Jessica Chastain? Uh, I have met Jessica Chastain. She's yeah. lovely. But I was at a junket. I cannot tell her and Bryce Dallas Howard apart. Really? Oh, that's racist. Uh, <laughs> It, it's definitely redheadist. Yeah. I just her chest is not red hair. In does a lot she? of movies, yeah, she does. She does. Yeah. Uh, we've already I'm discovered a, on the I'm, show I'm bad I'm, with hair color. I'm, so. a, I'm a fucking idiot. What did you think Jessica Chastain was somebody I else? I thought we were talking about Jessica Chobot. Oh. oh. <laughs> I was about to say, she was on a schmodown. Yeah. Jessica Chobot's we're wonderful. All, she's but great, she too. does not have red hair. Like, no, yes. The fact that I said she doesn't have red hair and you should be like, a moron, yes, she does. In, in everything. everything well, that she's I in. was trying to make you feel better, but like it's red, red. It's, it's, it's. <laughs> Josh was like, yeah, I could see how you would think it would be. Bright red, and that's now I understand the Bryce Dallas Howard yeah. thing. I'm like Bryce Dallas Howard and Jessica Chobat. <laughs> they look nothing, nothing. But alike. Bryce Don't Dallas, you guys think they look alike or no? Yeah, I can oh, see 100%. the similarities for sure. Bryce Dallas Howard and uh, Jessica Chastain did both did not have red hair in the same movie. That's oh. a showdown question. Can you guys name the movie? Uh, I can't name a time they didn't have red hair. What they color hair? Didn't have they both hair. had blonde hair in this mm. movie. What is it? What's the movie? We're looking for The Help. The Help. Ah. Yeah. Oh, and I saw it, too. Yeah, yeah, it's a great uh. movie. But great anyway, movie. lots of stuff going on. And then at 11.30, Jai Courtney is going to be in. Yes. Jai Courtney yes. is going to be yes. in here. It's Stormboard. We're going to be talking about his, the, new, the movie that he is in. It comes out. Uh, uh, this week, this mm. Friday, April 5th, Stormboy comes out in theaters April 5th. So we'll be talking to him for sure. He's going to be in. I, he just saw he's doing the rounds. He just talked to our friend Ash Cross and I saw that. Um, I have a lot that I want to ask him for sure. There's, there's the Suicide Squad stuff that he's got going on. It's kind of like you said, I have a lot I don't want to ask him. Did you say I have no, a I lot have, that no, I do want to ask him? I do want to ask him. Oh, okay. There's stuff. I wonder how much he's going to be able to answer. Well, I keep thinking he's going to give us the Ramsey Bolton snuff. A little bit, because when we ask Ramsey Bolton about Ramsey Bolton, he kind of he gives he gets a little cold shoulder. You, you just don't want to use his name. 
Uh, Ewan Rayon. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Right. nice. I think we can ask him stuff. This is very similar to the Cobra Kai guys yesterday, right? Yeah. There's just stuff they're not going to ask. At a time, you get to, and John Hurwitz, by the way, is who's the nicest person on the planet. At yeah. one point, you can tell him, he's like, stop fucking asking me these yeah. things. Yeah. I can't ask. I can't tell you any of this. Yeah. But, but. There are ways to ask other things about the movie that I think will be very, very also, curious. Also, 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 major difference. Ramsey Bolton, spoiler alert, be gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. As opposed and, and to his this jobs, movie, and his job is job done is with over. It. Right. And he's yeah. never going to be a part of that show again, and he's probably kind of upset about that. Yeah, he's as over opposed it. to The Suicide Squad, which now Brand has new, new Guy stuff. Courtney in it. Right. So I think that hopefully he'll want to promote his future. Well, I'm just curious about it because I also I would talk about Suicide Squad, the first one, right? Because which is one of my favorites. See, I, I and it's it's been I know. known. I'm not, I don't love it, but I did, and I have said I think that that he's great in the movie. He is great in the movie. What I like to see, what I want to know fan, though, he's the best part of the movie. I, I think Will Smith's pretty damn good too. Oh, yeah. I, Mark I, Robbie's I, amazing. Also, yeah, They're I want to know. I want to mm-hmm. know like again, like because there's a lot of those reports now that the Joker trailer came out today. Yeah. There's a lot of those reports on how Jared Leto was on. Said, you know, true, huh? right? Uh, true, <laughs> false. Another thing, by the way, that you do. There's two things I got to give you some shit about. <laughs> by the way, okay. oh shit, um, he's it. writing yeah. down giving uh, shit. I know. I have to notes. remember to ask about yeah. that one after this. Okay. This is something Roxy does famously. Mm. Mm. There's something that is true, and she exaggerates it times a thousand. Okay. Fact, mm. right? My family tells me all the time. Right. I don't think it's fact. It's how I see the world. Well, the <laughs> movie fights thing the, the movie fights thing was one way. When you said, I totally agree with that. When, yeah, yeah. yeah that was all right. All right, so now, Amanda now I don't says, know. I like to embellish. Yeah, but me I like too. to just add I'm a little. Colorful. There's a difference between them embellish. I'm there, tell a story. No, no, tell this, this, is, this is different. Because I'm yesterday, Jewish and Italian, and I've got the color. <laughs> I don't know. That was definitely a mix of Jewish and Italian. Yes, it, yeah, was. it was. Weird. It was yeah. I, was like, I was like, is that a ta- 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 Italian? I don't know. I'm a Jutalian. Jutalian. There you go. Now, yesterday you talked about the stuff on the set with the Joker, right? And about the extras. Yeah. It's and you told it. us that on the extras, that the extras were on the train for 13 hours and they were pissed off, right? They are on the train for three hours. Oh, that's a big. That's a big difference. Well, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't on purpose embellish that. I thought oh, it was thought thirteen it was. hours, and well, I th- heard they were pissing themselves. Three hours peeing themselves. It's probably just a random homeless guy that wandered onto the train. What a uh, twist! It's not the worst. Yeah, all, I've been on the train. All I can say is that I stew. I, um, I embellish a lot of things. Like, yes. oh my god, it's a million years. I didn't believe I was embellishing that at the time. Well, right. Yeah. But we well, still did it. <laughs> well, clearly. Right. If that's true. <laughs> Christian, these people were on the train for thirteen two days. Three, you know, they were on the train. <laughs> for they're understand. still on the they're train. The no one's even filming, and they're Reshoots. on the train. They're they won't let them Wait, out. What? They won't let them out. What yeah. train? <laughs> they won't let them off the train. What no. train? I know. What time was this train what taking movie off? Are we what talking station? About? I'm kind of bummed that you went Jew Italian and didn't go It Jew. Like I think that's a better name for the Italian it, Jew. It, it Jew. Well, well they, now, they now by the way, the spoilers Jew. are out. We have not talked about this yet. JT had the best flop I know where you're going. Of, of all time, time. Of all time. At the free for all, and this is for people. Now we're at spoiler territory, so this is worth it. The first of all. Jeff Snyder's uh, entrance was one of the Bear Jew from yes. from Inglorious Bastards, played so by Eli good. Roth, <laughs> and it was great. The music was a fantastic entrance by people Jeff Snyder. People have said I kind of look like I don't think it, Eli but people Roth? have tweeted at yeah, me that I kind of look like see Eli Roth. It. I don't see it. Uh, I, I see it, people seeing it. I see people, right, sure. Uh, no, thank you. Bro. Thirteen hours. Thirteen hours. <laughs> but so then JT makes his triumphant return. The place loses, the, the Patriots music plays, the place loses their mind. 550 people, they hear the dun dun, and it, this is big pop. He, I announce it, and for the first time I've ever announced it, because people are cheering for me because he's been yeah. gone for so long. First time I've ever announced it, and the whole crowd went, J T E! It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So he gets up there, he's answering, he does very well yeah, for his he return. Did awesome. And then the question comes, <laughs> and it's what was the nickname for Eli Roth's character in Glorious Bastards? Bibiani answers, the bear Jew. Whoever is next to him, the bear Jew. Brett gets it wrong. It's fine. Of course. JTE answers, <laughs> the Jew bear. The Jew bear. <laughs> and the place just lost it. The pl- Cody. Wait, didn't Co- he have I, another one also where no. he spelled something? W- yeah, but not like this. This is no. This, this, it was really bad too. It, what but, was but the, the other one? This, but this, this overshadowed amazing, yeah. it. Cody, oh, yeah. you you've been around for all the JTE isms. Is this top five? Yeah, I laughed for a solid like four minutes in a row. <laughs> the whole place did. <laughs> yeah. Dan Dan Merle hit his head underneath yeah. the thing, and yeah. I and I was like, Dan Merle can't show his face because it it started 
Like, wait, no, that's wrong. And then everyone went, oh, oh my God. Cra- <laughs> like, oh, my <laughs> like, God. Yeah, he just, and he, and he was, it was such an innocent, oh, the Jew bear. <laughs> it's like, you can't call a bear that. <laughs> I you so I'm texting you the day after the free fall. I was like, how'd it go? Whatever. Yeah. And like the fourth thing in the text thread was just like best JTEism ever. ever. Yeah. It was it and, was close to Trisanatorus tops, maybe. And then I just sent you a picture of a stuffed bear with a yamaka. Oh, I got so many. Matt knows wants me to make shirts. What yeah. I like about JTE though is that I think fifty percent, legitimately fifty percent of the competitors in the league would write that down and then say, You should give me the point. I had all the words there. And JT is always like, yeah, yeah, right. yeah okay. no, no, he's just like, yeah, nah, that's what it is. Not, it, it's, it's not right. No, it was, yeah. he could have challenged it, but there was no, but you, you, you can't, can't challenge, you can't challenge there, it. And there was, but how many competitors would? It's a lot that would. I mean, it's part of the strategy, but go to the second one. The second one's the best. This is, look at that picture. I yeah. mean, people, the people, I can't tell you how many I people. I own all of these bears. Yeah. <laughs> so, straight up at my true? house. I, like, I have so many bears that look Get like Get your this. dad to send them. Rabbi bear. bear. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. rabbi bear. And it was, it, God, it was It was just, if, now, if, if you don't watch any of the, if you haven't seen any of the free for all, you're like, oh, I don't like the Shmudo thing. I, I tell you, go to part two of the free for all and watch that line. It is, yeah. It's right when Brett comes out. It's during that round. It's towards the end. And it is amazing. I'm telling you there's another amazing one, too. It was somebody's name. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Oh, it was, it was Le- it. Lieb Schreiber. Lieb. Oh, Lieb. Yeah, he call- <laughs> Lieb. Yeah, I called him Lieb. Lieb. Lieb Schreiber. Yeah, Lieb. Like L-E-B and, and the, that, or that something. One, that one he wanted. Yeah. He wanted that one. I said, I said, it's not Lieb, it's Lieb. And he was like... <laughs> Well, that's yeah. not his name. His name's not Lieb. <laughs> yeah, my name's not Job. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, well, that's the whole argument with the Lena Heedy versus Lena Heedley. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's a letter. It's a, it's a different, different person. Letter. Yes. If it, Lena Heedley is out there somewhere, the it's not Rocky are... Stryer. It's Rocks. Right. Like that's the same right. thing. The hard ones for me are the middle name, like when we don't know what to do with the middle initial. Right. Remember, like David O. Russell. Well, or, that's part of because it, it's part of his name, and he had written name. O. Russell. He, well, and he did O apostrophe Russell as opposed to O point. That 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 that, I, no. that that one uh, yeah that I didn't that get was reaching. I'm not that, saying that, that I'm not Matt saying Riley, that, like, you're when it know. sounds the same like because you've heard it for so long. I mean I know. Yeah, it's just yeah. tough. That's the same name, though. When the David yeah. O. Russell, it's the same. It's not a different. No. It's not a different person. It's, oh, but the apostrophe makes a different person. Oh, you know, it's me, David silly. O. Russell. Yeah, that, um, that's what they're saying, and that that to me is a bit of a silly argument. But the but Lena Headley and Lieb Schreiber, mm-hmm. different people. Yeah, Lieb. The, Lieb. The uh, and also Liev, isn't yeah. it? Liev Schreiber. Yeah. 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 Um, the the only argument I could have with the JTE Jew bear, yeah. okay? So it just, just makes me giggle. Jew comma bear? Jew comma bear, yeah. yes. <laughs> Is if like at any one point in the movie, maybe Christoph Waltz had Called says, him that? Yeah, like you, you, oh, you, you and your Jew bear, right? Like he would, and he do, but he doesn't. But he doesn't. He doesn't do that no, in he the doesn't. movie. Dude, the whole no, place, 550 people together laughed in unison. If there, if there was anything that JTE did, he brought everybody in harmony because everyone was laughing. And Every... it's not a comedian. It's not laughing with. It's laughing directly. But, he, but he's so used to it at this point. It's because yeah. because cause it's one of those things that when he does it, the whole audience is thinking, oh, JTE. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Manny Ramirez, JTE being JTE. You you almost want it to happen. You want it to. You know, mm-hmm. We can play it. We can play it. That's fine. <laughs> Every time you, you find say you 550, found it. Oh my god! Yeah, it's a lot of people. I think about the 900 I people. As here it is. Turn it up. Five, I don't get enough oh credit god. for making Mark buy that Three, suit. Two, one, and we have Brett. Thank you. Oh, Brett. it's the bear, but I put the wool. Yeah, incorrect. JTE. Uh, the Jew bear. <laughs> no. No. Definitely not. No. Nope. Definitely nope. not. And nope. Janine. I put the bear Jew. That's correct. And the bear Jew. <laughs> That's correct. Bongiorno, the bear Jew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this this is number one. All time. Oh, the Only you. Only you. <laughs> Look at yes, everybody. Only you. Only you. Can I make a statement real quick? <laughs> do you have to? Look. <laughs> Here at the movie Trivia Schmodown, we do not discriminate bears based on race, <laughs> greed, religion. No, we don't. Uh, look at Dan. Dan, Dan. Dan's hiding his face. All right. <laughs> oh, so bear. good. That's number one because it's a live, live audience. Show, I know. Yeah. And a, because it just, it, look uh, at that. Oh, that has to be number one. Uh-huh. We, we should do an article 
on the sh- on TriviaSD.com with the yeah. best JTE flubs of all time. Totally. Bibiani, yeah. are you listening? I know yeah, you, you are. Come on, make that happen. Geppetto's pretty good, too. Geppetto, Geppetto's amazing. Yeah. Terra, Terra yeah. Do you have a hard time moving forward sometimes? Like, when you're hosting the show and something like that happens? Do you, How do you just It was It was a long it event, but it's like, it, it actually was very helpful because you're moving at such a pace that, like, JT's comedy, you're just like, like it, you oh, JTE. You just want to go, like, thank God for JTE. I missed him so much. I missed him so much. I'm so glad he's back. <laughs> Every time I see JTE, JT, I, 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 I really, really like that dude I, a me lot. Me too. He's I the love, best. I, he's, he just so, the he's just so simple. I love yeah. that insult. Best attitude. His Ever. attitude is bomb. He yeah. falls off his bird. He has, yeah. t- and by the way, I will, I will say this. He falls this. out of his bed and just walks. The he can rock the no teeth. He, he mm. r- ended up owing so much more money than he raised via whatever. He wouldn't mm. ask for everything that he uh, owed. And for he, what? For, the, for, for the, when he for fell the, off yeah, and yeah, broke yeah. his face. He... Uh, like I, I hope he doesn't birth. mind that I say that, but he yeah. ended up owing yeah. du- at least double what, it, and he still hasn't fixed some of his teeth. But he didn't want to ask people for more. Who he said has it the to best me? attitude. He's just like, it is what it is. You know, I'll get my teeth fixed when yeah. I get them. I think it was you. I think I, it was you who said to me. It, uh, it was you. Makuga walks up. He goes. I think the teeth thing works for him. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a good look. I think it works. I do. I, I legitimately think for JT, it, it, it works. <laughs> like that little like when he wa- when he walked It's in, like he, Lloyd Christmas. He, but it's it's so fitting for him. Yeah. I think I think I don't think he should fix it. I think I'm it looks great. You. He could probably book a bunch of roles with it. He, totally. He's the, he's the best. I, he is. I, my, my favorite part of Guilty Movie Pleasures was the 20 minutes I got to ride with JTE to Encino once a week yeah. and just talk about movies and Stallone and whatever the case is. That's all he be. wants to do. Does it's he, the best. he drives now, though, right? He or does, but this was back in the day when, you know. He didn't have a car forever. I mean, no. it was not too much back in the day, like yeah. six months ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Amazing. So, anyway, JTE is back, and uh, that that moment was just a classic, classic <laughs> yeah, moment. Yeah, he's back in full form. He really, he really <laughs> is. In full Jew Bear really form. Yeah, oh, so I gave you a little shit on one of those things. Another thing, um, you are never allowed to say anything about me now watching the, th- the thing. Because I haven't seen it? No. Oh. You've never seen The Matrix. Oh, yeah, you found out. I did find out. Yeah. yeah. And this is, a, this is a dirty secret you've been holding from yeah, us. Yeah, I, I never saw it. I will say, when she told me that, I think I may have blacked it out and like yeah. moved yeah. on because like, it's I don't think I was hiding it. It is Fans ratted you out, by the way. I don't know how to do it. What do you mean what how do you to do, do it? Mean? You, you turn put the, put the, the DVD in and sit down and watch it. play. Well, I just feel like it's, I've gone too far. No. Not with that it's, movie. It's, it's it's you you'll lose your mind. You'll love it. You will love it. It really? still holds up. Yeah. I watched it with my dad like about two and a half months ago. We loved it. You'll, you'll, right. you'll love I, it. I have nothing against it. It's like, do you guys know I had never seen a James Bond movie until last year? I saw uh, Goldeneye. Mm-hmm. And, it and was, you never went to see any of the, the new ones? I've never seen. I've never saw. I've like seen Casino one. Royale, nothing? I saw Goldeneye. Oh. <laughs> That's what so, she just said. She said she's seen one. So up to that I feel point, like we're I just was like, you, <laughs> you never saw a uh, Skyfall? Because I've seen is, one. But wait, you've never seen any of the Timothy Bowles? This is what happens when I say I don't eat cheese. Yeah. Mozzarella? Yeah. Parmesan? <laughs> never never once. Never. I, I haven't seen one. Well, wait, wait. But, you, but you've seen the Pierce Brosnan Pizza? ones, right? You've seen the Pierce Brosnan ones, right? I've, I've seen only one. seen one, and it was Goldeneye. And so, it was wait, because I played the video game. You haven't seen Octopussy? Right. Oh, no, that one. Right. But Roger Moore, you think Roger Moore was a good James Bond? I don't know oh. anything. <laughs> no, because George but, Lazenby is in Golden. Right. I you like Lazenby. <laughs> yeah, Lazenby Loves is great. Lazenby. Yeah. I don't know how. Right. So How many to me, go back. George how many, Which Sean Connery one is the best, out of the, your, your opinion, out of the ones that you've mm. seen? GoldenEye. Right. A pro, it's got to be GoldenEye. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Al- that's also the best Pierce <laughs> Brosnan one, and and also the best Timothy Dalton right. one. Uh, Gouda. Gouda? What? Manchego? Uh, but mozzarella is no. a little bit more nice on the little, stomach. A little blue cheese. Ricotta. This but don't you like wings? It's my every... Do you put yes. blue cheese on your wings? No. <gasps> I put buffalo on it because uh, I don't eat cheese. Oh, oh, oh. Cream oh, cheese. cheese, no cheese. Right. No cheese. But you like bagels. What do you put on your bagel? Butter. Oh, wow. Butter. And, and like a good Jew, lox. Do you like brie? Brie cheese? Lar- you like brie larson. Keep guessing, though. <laughs> Keep guessing. All right, cool. Well, good. Uh, Cheesecake? Well, now, a sharp no, Wisconsin major. cheddar? You don't need to see two or three, but the first one you need to see. I yeah. would like to, and I want to watch the James Bond movies. All of them? Well, I, a something. I, they just, I, I know this unpopular comment, uh-huh. but they uh, just, here we go. Th- What'd you do? it just doesn't like do it for me as a woman. Like, I'm watching it, and it just kind of, like... Dated. I only have seen one, and I've seen bits and pieces of others that, like, through clips, but, yeah, it just feels a little dated. Like, this is not how... Watch the new ones. Daniel Craig's... Daniel, like, yeah. Casino Royale is 
it's probably great. my favorite Bond. Yeah. Me okay. Too. I want to. I want to. I've never been. I mean, look, I I like. I've always gone. See, like, my dad and I used to go to see the Bond movies yeah, too. Same. I'm not That's like a, a hardcore thing. Bond uh, fan the way that like Kalinowski is. Mm-hmm. I went to see all of them and I enjoyed a lot of them, but then I just forgot about them. Yeah. Right? I never like got into like the hardcore fanboy part of it. But I did like the Daniel Craig. Well, I think two out of the how many did four. Yeah, four. it was what? Uh, I love Cena f- Rail, Quantum Solace, Skyfall, and then yeah, Skyfall and, and Spectre. Those, I liked yeah, all I didn't those. Like the, yeah. I didn't like the. What? <laughs> you got good. me. Yeah, nice. no, you gotcha. What? Very what? nice. I know. There you go. But anyway, so oh, I, I am very. I think turn. that it's good to have him close out with a fifth. We're done with Daniel Craig. Mm. Move on. The have you, Idris Elba, right? I would love to so see you on the street. He'd be great. Uh, back in the day, I don't know if you guys ever watched the Pete, Pete Holmes show when it was on uh, TBS. It was okay. It was like it was a little weird. But so he, not crashing. Not crashing. No, he had like his own. It was called the Pete Holmes show. It was a talk show, yeah. and he would start every episode with a sketch. And I, I I didn't love all the sketches, obviously, but he had one that was very very funny of James Bond getting into a shower with a woman and like trying to have sex with her. She's like, "Do you have a condom?" He's like, "What? No." I don't. And he's like, she's like, well, you need to have one. He's like, but I'm James Bond. I never use a condom. He's like, well, that's very unsafe. Right? It was a very fun, safe because right? every time he's like, he's with a girl, he, he blows up a building. He's like, let's fuck. That's right. like, yeah. that's James Bond. It, it, and that's the thing. That's fine. It's a movie. But it just, when I watched Goldeneye, I was like, okay. Yep. <laughs> that's why I think you might like the, the newer ones with Daniel Craig. Yeah. Because the there's a running story but, throughout yeah. all of them yeah. that has to do with love. Hey, real quick about the Pete Holmes thing. Did you, did you watch Crashing? Um, I've seen some of it, and what I've seen, I love. Watched every I've, episode. I never. You did. Mm-hmm. Is it because someone told me? Like, I can't remember who, but is it similar to Grasping at Straws? Uh, no. No. Okay. I mean, here's it's the thing: more is, similar to Louis. Okay. From what I've seen, the only thing that's similar to Grasping Straws is that like the beginning is kind of a breakup oh, kind of a situation, it. but okay. yeah, it's not. Yeah, but with more of a narrative. Okay. Yeah, like, totally. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it's not. No, not that Grasping no. at Straws. I, I know what you're saying. It's it's fine. Thank you, Cody. I still want to be in Grasping at Straws. I want to do this it. Was I want to. I want to do a remake of it. I think we can do a remake of it for sure. I think that the the character. I think you would be Marley at this point, and I want. I wanted. I wanted to switch it up completely. The the the, just the whole story. I have a, an idea of what I want to do with it. It's just a matter of you know time, money. Yeah. Mm. You, you should just write a pilot and try and sell the pilot. You know, maybe it's make harder it to do than make it yourself. Yeah. Making it yourself is easier. We could yeah. do both. Oh, totally. You but... could write a pilot and shoot a little sizzle of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just again timing wise. It's like uh-huh. I have enough. You, you're you're just as busy as I am. I know, but two busy people makes a good mm. life. Does it? <laughs> what was that? That's on a <laughs> was that Walmart in the James Bond right? movie? No, no, no. In the middle of talking, I didn't know how you to know finish. You know what you were saying. You no. just finished it. I mean, dove, uh, you dove right into the concrete. But, what I, yeah. <laughs> as I do every day. No, but you what went I, for it. What I can say is when you said you had a bone to pick with me, yeah. I saw you write something down. It looked like I said Matt. It ended Matrix. up saying Matrix. And yeah. I was like, uh-oh, Matt, Matt. And I started <laughs> racking my brain. Like, <laughs> no, Matrix. Actually, no, what I told do? Me, shit. Yeah, the, <laughs> other, Matt? Yeah, the, yeah. the other thing I got I to gotta, I gotta talk to you guys about because it's, it's, it's just enough is enough. This is fucking school drop off thing I'm doing every morning. Um, <laughs> I mean, I love it. I love dropping my kid off at You're school every day. Yeah, yeah. I tell my, my my daughter. There's no buses. I don't want her to take a bus. I like yeah. taking her to school. I don't know if there is. I don't care. I wouldn't put her. I like taking her to school. Cool. I, it's it's uh, it, we, daddy daughter time. Yeah, we take we, huh. we we drive to we drive to the school. We walk on to the to school. We, go, we get the we have, you know depending on what time we we're always racing. Got to get at the time right time to make sure we're not late because they don't. The school's fantastic. I love the school that she goes to. I don't know about the parents. Really? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. is this a, is it a charter school? Is a, yeah, a, yeah, a yeah, I don't want I don't give too much information about the school, but like I I was you, there's a thousand I, over I, a thousand of them. I, I yeah, know, okay. I know, but I walk. It just the the teachers are fantastic. The school program is amazing. I walk by and it's just like I just think people in life should be more friendly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like it's like. It's way easier. I can't to be tell friendly. you how many parents I I do the, the thing that I do with the the eye lock right. Anything you do an eye lock, I'm about to go. Hey, how are you? And they just turn their eyes and they keep walking. Yep. And I'm like, that's just bad manners. Totally. It happens, and it's like they're all part of the same class. Yeah. There's one guy, it's Red Sox guy. It's not some yeah, red, a Red Sox guy, and he just and he wears his hat. And and I oh. said to him, I saw him once. Well, I was like, hey man, how are you? He's like, hey. Then I see him again because once you do that once, you should see him every day. So, How's it going? Walks right by. There's another guy though the who's boss. not part of this class. That no, he's awesome. This one guy, and he's just. I had a Giants head on. He's like, that's tough. He's, a <laughs> he's like, but I'm a Bills fan. So, uh, we're, and we talked for the whole way back. See? Not everyone in the school. Just this particular group. I was just like, what's wrong with these people? This Say is a lot why of people. I was asking, and you don't have to give details yeah. about the school. But is are the parents like? 
Industry Hoity people, toity. affluent, it's a, no, obnoxious, no. all from L.A. All but from, it's a nice no. neighborhood you live in. Yeah, so. I think it's a mixture of both. Okay. I mean, they're not bad people. It's just that, that to me is just like bad manners. Yeah. I try to say hello to everybody. I try to look by and say, hey, how's it going? Nice to see you. What's up, man? How you doing? Nice to see you. I'm Dude. so surprised with that. That I do that? Yes. Why? Because of where we're from. I mean, oh. I, it's just, I don't know about you, but being from the East Coast, like, if when I moved to L.A. and everybody was looking at me and smiling, I was like, what? But that's the, <laughs> but, but, but you're in a different situation where you're just walking on the street you're talking about. I'm talking about being at my kid's school. Yeah, yeah. I These guess are, this is, this is You're going through, and I'm I like. I can't share that feeling. Yeah, so I walked through, and because her teacher's the greatest. Oh, the greatest. Like, just, like I wish that I had her. When I was in is the it first the one teacher situation, or do they like move? No, they have. There's tons of, the, the school system. I can say another a, a better word about this school. It's like the the teachers from the program, everything about it. It's heaven because we moved her from one school to another, and this is this school is the best. But like the uh, but the yeah, just the, I was like, come on, it smile. So my brother, obviously, kids same age as you. My brother always either encounters because he's in Northern California. He he encounters that he thinks is that if he says hi to a parents, that it shows a sign of weakness in my brother. Like if my, no, here's the thing. It's it's funny. He's like, I'm trying to be friendly to everybody, but a half of these parents don't want to be because their kids are competing against my kid, and they see me as the competition. Competing which, for what? Grades, uh, priority, <laughs> trying to get into the next school right. because my, my first grade. Uh, I mean, third, third fourth yeah. grade, whatever. Here's the thing. Here's Eighth? what's crazy. So Eighth. my brother Eighth. and this, I, I've heard this on like I heard this from another friend in, in another part of the country, whatever. Yeah. But everybody is so competitive where he is. Everybody is super competitive. And uh, my brother is wearing a Pittsburgh shirt. Obviously, we know we mm. rep. Those and, and the guy, this guy comes up to me. He's like, "Oh, you're from Pittsburgh." And and my brother's like, "Yeah." He's like, "You know, uh, did did you like living there?" And my brother's like, "Yeah, it's a great city." And my, and he's like, "Is it is it affordable?" Can, can, and my brother's like, "Oh, are you moving there?" He's like, "No, we're thinking about uh, sending our child to Carnegie Mellon." And my and my brother's like, "Oh, it's an amazing school." Is he junior, senior? He's like, "No, he's seven. I was like. A seven year old, you're already planning what college he's going to go to? Right. Like, give this kid an opportunity to just do something. Right, right. Because there was this, this one particular woman that I saw this morning who I, we saw, we, my wife and I went somewhere over the weekend. We saw this woman, and I've seen her every day. Yeah. Right? Saw her, lock eyes were with the place that we were at over the weekend. She's just kind of doing anything, looks back, doesn't even acknowledge. So I'm like, ah, oh, that's nice. Oh, and it. then today, I see her again. And I'm like, hey, not a word. And I'm just like, what is wrong with people? Like, what is wrong with people? It's a different yeah. kind of day. It's every day. <laughs> to not just say hey. It's just or hey. Like a, yeah. or hey you, I'm sticking up for my people right now. I'm sticking up for my people. But you, this is not, this, don't, these, are, these, don't, are, don't. these are not your people, though. Yes. Oh, okay. These are, because this, if, if this was just on walk, if I was on the street and I said, Roxy, I was walking down, I, was, I went to the Burbank AMC over there and I was walking around channeling people out and nodding at them and going, how's it going? And then they acknowledge me like, good, you're a fucking weirdo. Leave yeah, me alone. Okay. I understand that. But at, at this a should be a community. It's a community. Yeah. It's like yeah. we're all, our kids are, are growing up together. Yeah, What's the deal with community? I mean, come on. Come on. Figure it out. Are they nice? Are they terrible? What are you? You could give me a nod, like a, mm, like something. Why don't you smile? Just smile at us. What? I mean, come on. Just Roxy perfect. listens to the show. I mean, so, listen. Going back to what Josh was saying, though, I feel like it's actually an okay thing to say that they're going to Carnegie Mellon. Here, oh. and here. When they're seven? Yeah. Thinking for, about <laughs> moving their whole family to Pittsburgh for their seven-year-old? Yeah, I think You know how bonkers that is? Before you answer, very important. Yeah. Swiss? Mm -mm. No. Right. Well, not mm -hmm. even the Swiss. Go ahead, go ahead. So for a couple of reasons. Number one, when I was seven, that's when I decided where I wanted to go to college. And so that's how my parents USC? told everybody. Yeah. Oh. At uh, seven? I always How'd you wanted that? Watch football to go. Or something? Uh, well, my my grandparents lived out here, oh. so and they were huge USC fans. And yes. then also, I don't think this child ever said they wanted to go to Carnegie Mellon. So, the parents were like, "We're going to send them to Carnegie a, Mellon." You right. don't know, but B, the thing specifically about that statement, and I know it sounds like I'm being nitpicky, but I mean it because I don't want to bash on these parents. When when you say Carnegie Mellon, I think, oh, so your kid must be either. Uh, into architecture, like drawing houses, or into the arts. So you're thinking, oh, okay, and you want to be supportive. It's better than saying, like, my kid's never going to college, you know? What? You <laughs> know what? I have, I, I have a problem. I have a solution. Like, I have a solution to this. Yeah. 
We call Lori Laughlin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. Say, this sounds like a parent yeah. in waiting. Like, they're going to yeah. Carnegie Mellon. Yeah. Did you, you, did you hear people. Lori Laughlin's kids? Were, is like, she's mad now at her parents. She won't talk to her parents. She's like, <laughs> a lot of those kids didn't know it was happening. Did you read that? Yeah. No. It, and it's so incredible. Weird. And honestly, when I heard that, I said, no way. And then I read it and was like, oh, yeah, they yeah, really did. But have you seen this girl's way to protect She's kind of a dummy. She's not the brightest. But Which one? Olivia uh, Laura Loftus. She wants kid. to be like a YouTube star. She yeah. was a, she was She's a makeup tutorial artist, and she said England's my favorite city. <laughs> Says the YouTube personality. Yeah. Um, thank you. Man, we, we don't do makeup tutorials. Not yet. The yeah. city but of England, you, baby. I'll tell you what's coming uh, nice. to Schmodown next week. Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah Schmodown tutorials. <laughs> Honestly, you have quite twist. the crew in there that could. Jen could rock some makeup tutorials. Oh, they always do. They always, I mean, you look at. She does. Uh, every girl before the show down, she's doing all their makeup. Not mine, but no, everybody. She does, well, I'll tell you, that's the thing. Who did I have the conversation with? It might have been you yesterday. And Alex, I, I'm not I'm not a big fan of the entrances. I, I, they, I, I think that when the, the, the big elaborate entrances, I think they're a huge part of the show. And I think that the fans love them. You personally don't like doing I'm just them. not a big fan of it. No, doing oh. them, it's, that's up to. I know Cody. Cody's the same way. But you're talking my language. Christian, I know. It. I know. It puts a lot. It, it puts a lot of pressure on the uh, on, on the production team, but but they do it, and and all of the competitors are very respectful in regards to when they when they send an email to they'll ask like, can uh. we pull this entrance off? And that and the team will be like, yes, we can do it. So it it, it has nothing to do with do that. Do they say I just, no sometimes? Thad rarely says no because I, and I and I told that I said and I said you this is, this is your call whatever you however you want to do it because for me. And I think that there's some great ones out there. I think there's some great ones, and they put a lot of effort into it. They put a lot of money into it. They, they, the competitors do. I just like the traditional wrestling, boxing entrance of I'm here. Like the big elaborate things. I For me, I'm just like, that's and it's just not my thing. But I don't know where we... Where, is that taking a Wildberry shot there? Or Wildberry's just you just come no, out? No, he's just running into the ring. But yeah. like my... my, cool. my the, the reason the I think of it, the makeup's always phenomenal. I don't want to be wrong. Yeah. Like, because you look at... you look at For, for example, to me... Rachel and Clark. And, and I think and there's a difference between something of like... To where I think a very important entrance, and it was a different type, was the, the, the spectacular entrance when all the women of the league came in and they were all... Met. Like that to me, that was fantastic. That, yeah. that That's a very... And, it, and it's the spectacular for the spectacular big elaborate entrances and things of that nature i love it i just never been that's just you know it's not my thing but i but i understand that it's not going anywhere i'm not it's, it's not gonna leave the schmodown sorry cody but uh it's it's just because <laughs> fans I think love, you it. Fans love, love it you yeah. you know that this is wwe meets trivia right and you love both aspects of it but the trivia one because it holds you so strongly sometimes you don't necessarily need the lavish stuff for me i'm you obsessed with yeah. the entrances people, people love them people, because people that's part of that for me and like yeah. watching whatever it is that Brienne does every time. Right. I mean, uh, Bibbs. Bibbs is, is a master. Of yeah, it. there are some really yeah. great ones. They, uh, Bibbs, Stacy. Uh, That's why I we mean, vote on it. Yeah, they and like I said, it is not going anywhere. The competitors love to do it. The fans love it. I am way in the minority. I just. It's I can, fine. You're I, can to dislike I can dislike it. things on my own league. It doesn't mean just because I don't, you know. Just, just, I mean, you could be like Vince McMahon and dislike the wrestlers. I mean, it's yeah. Fine. If I if I want if I wanted to say if, like I would not just because I don't like it, and everyone else does say don't do entrances anymore. It's like people love them. So yeah. anyway, um, all right. Let's move on. To some we got some stories, Riley. What do we got? Some stories. Yeah, some we do. Fucking I mean, stories. We going have on? the Joker. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, <laughs> Wait, you just did that real quick. I have to tell a story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was playing golf. It was like six months ago, mm -hmm. and we're playing. Uh, a, my buddy, he's a member at this club. We're out of this club, and we joined with two guys I've never met before. Right. Yeah. And um, the, we see these little ducks and the mama duck in this pond. And this guy pulls up. He's like, do you guys see how fucking adorable those ducks are? <laughs> I was like, whoa, dude. Take it easy. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I know. So the rest of the time, like, we'd see a duck. And I'd be like, a duck is fucking adorable. Look <laughs> yeah. at that thing. It's true. That uh, sounds like they're, me. They're, they're fucking adorable. Yeah. They're fucking yeah. adorable. It's true. Uh, what, Sorry, you're, man, po you're pointing at the screen, first of all. There's yeah. some breaking news. Right. There's uh, breaking Let's do it. news. Yeah. Which, uh, He's got it up there. David yeah, Harbour baby. joins Black Widow. Wow. You know? Yeah. <laughs> David Harbour's doing tons of stuff. You got the you got his Hellboy version coming out very soon next week, I believe. Um, and then we have Florence Pugh is already suiting up for the for the spy action thriller. So what? So what is she? Is she young? Is Florence Pugh young Black Widow, or or is she just or not someone else inside? Of we her? haven't heard yet where it's set. Uh, so why can't I picture who that reading. is? She was Paige in, um, oh. in Friday Night Family. She was also in the the uh, Robert the Bruce movie with Chris Pine, mm. gotcha. and she was great. She's she is. She is a star. 
Is, she, that's how you say her last name? Florence Pugh, yeah. She yeah. is a star. I lived on Pugh Street in college. Yes. Yeah. The, the thing with her is that she's not one of these stars. Like a gen- I mean, and nothing against Jennifer Lawrence. She's a great actress, too. But Jennifer Lawrence is like a movie star, right? Yeah. This girl is got the chops. like the fun. And again, Jennifer Lawrence can act. She we know she can. Oscar. She won an Oscar. She's a great actress. But she is kind of embodied now. I mean, she's let's call it. She's been phoning it in with the X-Men movies, right? Totally. And she's not even wearing makeup in this no. last trailer, uh, basically. Florence Pugh, to me, is going to... like you. What she did in Fighting My Family and... And that Robert the Bruce movie, she she is a superstar. Wow, I can't wait. She's great. David Harbour just did a really good interview with Sam Jones off camera with Sam Jones. I don't know if you guys watch that show, but he's fan. I mean, it's an awesome interview. Yeah, he's a fun guy, man. Yeah. He's, he's, you he's met been, him? Uh, I, yes, I did at the Critics' Choice Awards. Uh, he's a fun guy, but he's also just but just seeing him in general things that he did. The, the movie, what was the movie? He played a serial killer in a movie and he was terrifying. It was right before he blew up. It was right before he blew up and he, it was... Let me pull it up, Christian. Who was... Go bring him his IMDb and I feel... I can... What the hell was it? It was See a, if my fingers can be Cody. I can tell uh, you... Uh, it, uh, I'm uh, trying uh, to uh, think. Uh, it's right around the 2000 and... Uh, keep going, keep going. It's Revolutionary deep. Road. No, that's no. not it. <laughs> what the hell was the movie where he was... Was it Snitch? Now keep going down. Maybe it was... Oh, it's it not been, a walk it, among the tombstones. Yeah. Sleepless. Equal. Which one's sleepless? Is that is I that the no one? Idea. Is that sleepless the one with Liam Neeson? Let's see. Maybe it was. Maybe. Walk among the tombstones. That's it. Liam Neeson. That's it. That's it. Walk among the tombstones. Oh. So when I said it, it just wasn't it. But what did you say? Walk among the tombstones. You yeah. said it. I didn't. <laughs> you didn't say that. Did I you did. Really? That. She did. Thank Damn you. It. Uh, I didn't hear you. Um, but yes, you're absolutely I said it right, Roxy. Thirteen times <laughs> on the train. <laughs> on the train for four hours. Pissed myself. <laughs> nice, but anyway, he was terrifying in that movie. I can't remember who it was with him, and I don't. I mean, this is why I don't do Schmodown anymore. He I had an wrecked. awesome quick turn in Banshee that was fantastic. He was also so. really good in the newsroom. Unreal. Yeah. That show is so underrated. Totally, I can't get over it. It just had such a goofy Aaron Sorkin-y ending to yeah. it that I one was of like, the best yeah. pilots of all totally. time. Do you totally. guys want to see the advertisements up here for the Tick? Because it was good to have the guys on. Do you watch Tick? Yeah. Because Yara, my, my friend Yara Martinez, is coming yeah. in also. She's going to be. She's coming in. Soon, right? She was great. It's going to be April season two. 17th. April 17th, she comes yeah. in. Did yeah. you guys feel really bad for them? <laughs> for what they were, in the beginning, when they were talking about their suits and stuff, and like the way it was, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I think, I also think they were kind of playing it up a little bit. Maybe, but I never hear that from actors. Like, yeah. this is miserable. See, and we know we're doing the, something for the yeah. greater good. But and they love oh the show. my God, I hate this part. Because your question, Christian, was is it fun? He's, I said, you look like you're having yeah, so much fun. Having and fun. they're like, no, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> it's, it's actually brutal. Pain, right. But they yeah. love the show. We're in so much pain. And when I'm not in pain, all I'm doing is thinking about breathe. Breathe. Right. I was like, this is. Un- I feel awful for these is it guys. Because the yeah, suit Griffin's, is just so uncomfortable. Yeah, uh, both of them. podcast. He said that he uh, <laughs> Alex, wait, wait, broke I, his back I, I, or Alex, something. Alex, hold on a second. I love you to death. I love you to death. Here, 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 here's what we do for when you say, "Hey guys." That's it. Yeah. Hey guys. And then, oh, Alex, got some. I, I love it. He's, he's done this eight yeah. times. It's just. It's, it's, it, I think that the mic is just on, like off a lot of times, and Cody's just used to it at this point. Alex is just talking for like <laughs> a full two hours, and then Cody's trying to find the time. I'm gonna try it now, and then he's just in the middle of the conversation with himself, and then Cody just lets it go. It's just, I'm, I'm in such support of him chiming. Me in. Too. Too. I just, me too. The way it's happening it's just, is no. Is Jar- very, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's having a conversation with himself. He's like, hey guys. Yeah, Alex. Something about his podcast. Yeah, I, go I, ahead. I, mean, I, I hear a lot of great points that he says. Do they make it to the microphone? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's and, that, and that's it. Cody, you should just start relaying it. Uh, yeah. Al- guys, Alex said something. Thank you. <laughs> Alex, do you have something you would like to say about the tick? Yeah. Okay, um, what would you like to say? On uh, Griffin's podcast, he said that he broke his back like just doing a... Um, a conversation, a dialogue scene. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> so that's how uh, he God. broke his How did he back? break his back? Or like dislocated some uh, something different. in his spine somewhere like from the suit. Yeah, yeah, just being in that suit. Oh my that's a God. lawsuit. Yeah, that's a lawsuit. Oh, yeah, wow. So you see, uh, we broke major news all over the place. Oh yeah, the Darth Maul stuff, yeah. man. I, I thought I I just assumed that that had been asked from him a million times. Yeah. I loved how open and well, frank he was about it. I'm kind of guessing it was asked from him, and he probably didn't answer it a few yeah, times. Yeah, he answered it this time. And then he just yeah, far enough yeah. removed, maybe. Yeah, maybe exactly. it's been cut. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of people are covering maybe it. So I covered us. this morning. Uh, maybe it was. It was. Jared good. Haben was uh, tagging us. I saw that. that was so Right. Cover, but he asked me, so Peter, at the end, so he's buddies with Benedict oh, yeah. Wong. And so he saw that we had a picture of Benedict Wong with the Schmodown title. And he's like, he's like, do you have that here? I was like, the belt? Yeah, I got it. He's like, I want to take a picture 
with in front of the in front of the Benedict Wong picture, and then I want you to frame it and put it next to his. I'm like, we'll do that. And we so first he asked for the picture, and then after we took it, he was like, would you mind printing it, and framing it, and putting it up there yeah. as soon as possible? Uh, <laughs> she was like, yeah, okay, ab- right. absolutely. I love Peter. anything he's, for he's, the guests. He's he's a very quirky kind of different dude. Totally. I like him. It was interesting because they were pointing over here, and uh, we had Jean Claude right there. Right. And every person that comes in here comments on the Jean Claude picture, yeah, right. and so they were, he was pointing. And I was like Jean Claude, and he was like, "What? No, Benedict, Benedict Wong. Wong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's his body. Yeah, they they like the both from the UK. Speaking of really quick, speaking of a guest that was sitting there yeah. yesterday, I didn't know, but he comes like, "Oh, you're from oh, Pittsburgh. Uh, we uh, went to the we grew up in the same John town. Hurwitz. Who? Yeah, John, John Hurwitz. Hurwitz. today. Yeah, John. Same town. He but he he moved. I think he said when he was in like the eighth or yeah. ninth grade, and he's a few years older than me. But we he I moved, was like, he do, you know so and so? do you know so and so? Do you know so and so? He's like, yep, yep, yep. Went to school with all of them." He's wow. crazy. Those guys are the best. Yeah. Like when you when you have the, the, we talk about this all the time. There are certain people when you say, "Oh yeah, they definitely earned their success and good for them." And there's some people that that get it. And you're like, "Yeah, they're talented, but they're dicks." Right. Timely Jones. And like, <laughs> and, but like when totally. there's when you see guys like that that legit like love what they're doing, totally. love, love. Them, and they're just good people. You're like, I want this show to go on for 40 years. <laughs> I want them to be so happy. Yeah. I want them, like, I root for them because they're just good people. I was really upset though yesterday because I'm such a fangirl. And I, when we were in the middle of the conversation yeah. with them out there, I left to go get water like an idiot. Mm. And then I just like couldn't figure out a way back in. I was like kind of out, like walking the outskirts. You guys were, bo- now creepy. you guys were completely dialed in and having yeah. individual oh, conversations. Man, just, yeah. And so I was like, and so I stood there on my phone pretending like I was doing something for like five minutes. And then I was like, okay, I can't do this you anymore. You are just creepy. So then I was like, oh, I'll talk, I'll talk to them. So creepy. I was like, oh, okay, I'll go talk to the publicist. But yeah. then as I was walking around, she got looped into the oh, conversation no. too. So now so I'm standing just, on the other oh, side. I, wish I, had a camera on I you. phoned uh, I did on the phone. Then finally I was like, okay, maybe if I like step back a little bit, maybe one of them will notice and be like, rocks. So I stepped back a little bit. No, no one noticed. And I watched it and I said, all right, bye guys. And then <laughs> I like, left. Yeah. It's like well, the one of those scenes where a guy walks up and she's like, ha, 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 yes, right. into a group conversation. It's happened in many a movie many, or yeah. TV show. Yeah. See, I understand. And, and how would you know this? Because you don't, you, this is the first time you kind of met them. But like, I understand for a lot of times with the guests coming in there to feel that way. With those guys, you just walk right up. That's just totally. how they are. You just, they'll, they'll, they'll have so many different conversations and they love talking about it. Yeah, so. but the, you guys were like boys being boys. And, yeah. they, and actually the thing that I heard was like, oh yeah, he's one of the guys. Like talking about, I don't remember, some somebody that maybe we wanted to come bring in here. Or oh, whatever. Uh, William Zappi. And then yeah. I was like, oh man, like, I'm one of the guys. I could be in this conversation, but then I was like being so needy and weird, and I couldn't do yeah, it. So. Oh, well, next time they're in, because they'll Creeping come in. Behind. Yeah. Well, I, that show's gonna go on for a bit. It's definitely gonna get renewed for season 100%. three. I mean, it's gonna people. It's gonna blow up. She once said it comes she would out. send it to us. We're waiting. We're waiting. Um, okay, listen. So there's some other stuff that broke that broke before. Uh, this this story that we just talked about with news David or Harbour. No, 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 news. So oh, let's talk yeah, about some news. more news. What do you got? Uh, well, two things. Uh, in Marvel, stay, staying there, Avengers Endgame breaks the box office pre sales in six hours. Crazy. Wow. Six hours. <laughs> the, didn't the site yeah. break down? Site. Your site's all over, bro. Yeah, RB3 Jay, posted a video. Did he? Yeah. I saw Jay Washington's. Um, I saw Jay Washington's tweet. There, he was buying tickets at two in the morning, and it was almost sold out. Two yeah. in the morning uh, for a three-hour movie. That's Jeez. crazy, absolutely crazy. There's if I don't go to a screening with you guys, I won't see it for the for first a while. Two weeks. It's like yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna it's gonna be. Am I, I, it's funny because I talked to my brother, who is in um, he's in Tampa, right? And he said uh, I was because he was talking about he buying his tickets, and I was curious because it, it's not like here it, tickets go so quick in L.A. and so. New York. Right? So I was like, well, you you bought your tickets? It, it was it packed up? Like he's like, normally I don't need to li- really do it like day of. You can go and get tickets. Excuse me, until day of. Sure. And so he's like, but I bought my tickets last night and it was almost gone. Yeah. He's like, it wasn't he's like it was it was wow. it was it wasn't all the way packed yet, but it was almost gone. And it was like a What's uh, the premiere date again? Twenty fifth? Uh, yeah, a week from this Monday. So okay. the only good thing you can do is go by yourself opening night if you didn't buy tickets in advance, because usually of the people who bought tickets in advance, one or two or something can't end up right, making it. Right. So if you if it's really sold out, my hot tip is just go there solo dolo. You'll find something. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's still it's you should definitely get your tickets and if, and I don't I, think you can. At all? I, I mean, I, I mean, think well, maybe like, not opening night, yeah, but I mean, yeah, yeah. whenever you can. It's probably it's it's at all. Yeah, <laughs> you never can watch it. Uh, but it's like 
the, the, then the conversation started to turn into, can it beat Avatar? And I still don't know if it can, but it's certainly going to have a chance. Yeah. That- Oh, so and now, a now a lot of box office predictions are it could open at three hundred. That's insanity on three weekend yeah. domestic. You, it could make a billion dollars. opening oh, weekend I mean. worldwide. What did so Avatar make opening the, weekend? Uh, opening week, it, opening weekend, not, not much. Like the, maybe fifty or sixty yeah. million. It was, right? it was just people kept going back yes. for Avatar, yeah. which was. Yeah, weird. Avatar didn't even clarify. Avatar only made Gully. 50 or yeah. 60? Can we look that it, up? Yeah, because remember, Force Awakens was the first movie to ever crack a hundred million in December. Yeah. No, no movie ever had ever done it. So um, Avatar, let's see, Avatar, the, pff, look at that. That's five sequels already. I don't know how that's going to work out. Seven, <laughs> so it made a total of $2.7 billion. It made 77 opening week. 77. Okay, how much so, did Fern Gully make? $2.7 I don't know, man. That number is insanity. It's insanity. I still every time we have a big movie like this, I and I remember how much yeah. of Avatar made. We're never. I, I have no idea if we but, can hit it. But it's all about you fo- say it, funny. It's Avatar. all <laughs> about foreign. It's all about the yeah. foreign box office because domestic. That movie didn't even crack a billion. You know, it's kind of weird. Has too. any movie cracked a billion domestically? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think Force, I think Awakens, Force Awakens, Awakens cracked Force a billion. Awakens it got like movie. nine something. Did it? Didn't quite crack it. Okay. Oh, okay. But Close. Still, but it made two billion. Two billion worldwide. worldwide. This could be Not a stupid comment, but I feel Force like Awakens. that's crazy for a movie that a lot of people have never heard of. Like kids these days, or if I called my little sister, I don't know if she's ever heard of Avatar. Obviously, Star Wars, she knows what right. Star mm-hmm. Wars are. But Avengers? Ava- yeah, well, she would know. It's I nice. don't know if she would know necessarily Avengers. She would know Marvel Okay. if yeah. I said that. But like people who are not involved at all. I, I just don't really. know if she would ever have I heard mean, of the Avatar. The build up for well, this thing too is even the casual fan is like, oh, everybody's dead? Right. Now what? Because mm-hmm. it, it's it's just repeating the same point that I make a billion times, but it's, it's the fact that it's it's a serialized television show that happens to be in the Correct. movie theater. And, yeah. it's, and yeah. this is the series finale. Yeah. For, I mean, there'll be another spin-off sure. series. There'll be a Better Call Saul Marvel. Yeah. yeah, there'll be another with characters that pop in. But this is the this is the, the narrative that was set up from Iron Man one until now. This is, you know, for well, w- Captain Marvel kind of is Better Call Saul Marvel. Sort of. It still plays into the narrative of this stuff. This. It yeah, plays it's into still the, the main. End. Yeah, like a lot. Like of, you better could, Call Saul. Well, no, but yeah. better, better Call Saul is, a, is you're right because it's a prequel, and so but it but yeah. it doesn't and it leads totally. in. But this is but this is still pushing in. Dude, there's more there's more to come as we're bra- breaking bad. But is done. if Better Call, here's the thing: is what I think is, if Better Call Saul was airing during right, yeah. right. Breaking Bad, yeah. then it would be a little more close. But I get what you're saying; it makes total sense. Yeah, as far as timeline wise goes, absolutely. Yeah. But it, but as far as now, we know that we still. If the, it was almost like you're saying, like if there's yeah. one more episode of Breaking Bad left now after all of this Correct. has come out, yeah. um, isn't it crazy that movie tickets are twenty one dollars? That was just a regular. That ticket. was just a regular Arclight ticket. It was twenty D. Arc like three D. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, is that I what don't you don't got, know. Cody? Why are we doing? No, th- this is. This is just the Thursday night, uh, the first wow. showing in the dome. And uh, wait, are those and those seats available or not available? The red is taken. Oh my god! Yeah, twenty one dollars. So Thank much you, Alex. Money? And there's a couple gray. Like, the, see the gray <laughs> in the Alex. back there, and the gray in the back of the dome. Yeah, that's where I watched Force Awakens the first time. <laughs> okay. And I'm sitting next to a so comedian buddy. Up. Uh, that randomly we just I just yeah. I, Ellis gave me a single seat, oh, okay. so I walked in there and I'm sitting and. You're sitting in the gray. I'm sitting so in, the in the back very row, front? the backish row. No, that's no, the front. front. Oh, front. so the front. then you're all the, the way in the back, oh, okay. where, you're, where your view is a little obstructed because it's the back, oh. you know, in the dome. And I'm like the whole movie, I'm like scrunched yeah. down to try and watch it. But you know, there's nothing quite like the energy in a room like that yeah. on an opening night. It doesn't matter, Star Wars, Avengers, whatever. In, in Nuts, some, yeah, dude. I mean, that movie is going to be something else. Yeah. Yeah. Rush. What's a normal ticket go for? Arc Light's like seventeen fifty. fifty. You know what though? No, Cody. Here's here. Check how much a ticket is in Tampa. Yeah, don't even have to do that. I can tell you right now. West Covina yeah. is eleven dollars for a luxury ticket. Yeah. Wow. That's where I'm. What's watching. luxury? Uh, Look, like recliner seats and all that shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's see. Let's see what like so. Pittsburgh's ten fifty. Go, go to yeah, how much? It's L A. Man, yeah. West Covina eleven dollars. L A. is seventeen, eighteen, twenty dollars. Yeah. I, I want. I want to see how much it Grove is here. Grove is fifteen seventy five. The ArcLight seventeen fifty. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're looking at sixteen twenty. Well, the Tampa tickets are how much? The, why do you think a man and I go see like three movies a year? Ten it's just bucks. Expensive. Ten bucks for for Tampa. It's yeah. See. Ten bucks. It's like the same thing for Pittsburgh. 
Oh, it's yeah. 11 bucks at a nighttime show. So, but still, I mean, that's like they're, they're a little behind yeah. the times, and that's when I would like to be behind the times. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so what's what's next, Riley? Anything well, good? Well, keeping with Marvel, uh, it's official. Captain Marvel is the first female led superhero. It passed one billion. Yeah. One billion it, it was like crazy. No brainer. It's crazy, man. Billion dollars. We were talking about it, what, Monday? So yeah. it, it happened by Wednesday. Only because yeah. of the way you just phrased that. Because Did usually, Wonder Woman give it uh, What I was going to say is usually I don't like to compare, but yeah. I am so I am so surprised that Wonder Woman didn't pass us like Captain I am too. Marvel It got did. close. I think it was $800 million. Wonder Woman is a better film than Captain Marvel is. Wonder yeah. Woman's also a w- more well-known uh, character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, But this is this is the this point. Is in a different league. But it's, a different it's, league. Yes, it's, in, it's just in... It is playing into Avengers. It is part of the timeline. It is yeah. part, it, it, People want to know, do I need to see this in order? And the, the answer is actually you probably do yeah. really need to see this too. I don't haven't seen Endgame yet, but you would assume from the trailer that she's going to have a pretty big part and you want to know where she came from. So you see the movie. Yeah, but probably would still make sense without yeah, it. Yeah, I think it would too. But I mean, I, it helps though if you go and you're like, oh, I feel a little bit, oh, well, now I know who that is because I watched her Can movie. Can I counter with something? Is... We never got to really meet Aquaman before Justice League or Cyborg or The Flash. And I think that movie suffered because of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And because we got a full movie of Captain Marvel before Endgame, when she shows up in the trailer, we're like, yeah, right. all right, sick. So, yeah, mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. But we didn't get to meet any anybody of them, so, anybody. except for Superman. Superman yeah. and Wonder Woman. Yeah. Oh, what? did you see this turd of a turd post? Oh, don't even bring that guy up. Uh, is he a person? He's, yeah, don't even bring him up. Who he's, is mm, he? He's the worst. The worst. He's the worst. And he and I'm not giving. I'm not even giving I him money. I can't get over people who look at he, me but and this, but okay, this, but not about him in particular, yeah. but people who say that I'm not a DC fan. I have just dedicated oh God. so many hours of my life. This like, is, this isn't is that some, what this, being a this fan is, is? This person's. It's all this person does. Holy yeah, crap! Because I know you're talking it's, about it's, it's like yeah, because it's the whole the whole thing is that you need material. Oh, and the funny thing is. He thinks that I blocked all his stuff. Yeah. This collider is like linked to my account when it first set up, and whenever they block an account, then it's blocked from but you. But if he wants to blame it on me, I don't care. But that's fine. Good. Block it. Like, yeah. I just can't. I, but it's not just him. Anybody who ever messages me, like, I am a diehard DC fan. Anybody who talks to me knows it, that. It does. It, but proxy, it, it's it, so it, it weird. Does, but it doesn't matter. No, yeah. it, no, it, it doesn't it, now, matter. Not but to him, to him, what I'm saying is, it yeah. you could say, you could you could take pictures at Warner Brothers with the with the freaking whoever's going to be the Flash. He he's just there to rally. It's it's like rally up the the supporters of a. They're the worst. They're the worst. They're the worst. That's that's and, and now we use this in, in a video and, you, and you'll you'll we'll, we'll see that too. But that's what he does, and that's that's the thing. So um, Yo, let's, what a troll! He's the worst what, troll. But what let's, a let's troll. and he's loving that we're talking about him. So yeah. I we well, didn't I, say his name. I don't even know people, it. To people be honest. know. People know. Don't Go ahead. Say his name. He's no, the worst. that's uh, that's it. I mean, one billion is going to keep going. Right. And uh, it's crazy. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah. So then, uh, what's wh- that's everything kind of going on in the, in the news? I mean, then there's some trailers. I don't know if you saw the the Annabelle three trailer. It's a little old. We haven't nah. talked about it. No, you're not the. It's I like this I, because it's like getting the Warrens in again, and yeah. it's you know, yeah, and it's the, it's the Conjuring little room, they've, and everything comes to life. They have built out a great franchise. They've great. built out a great franchise to where it's not 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 necessarily in quality, but in a shared universe. They did it in a way that there are other. Places that were trying to do shared universes, like Universal tried the monster, it didn't work. They're they're making it work. James they Warren's did it. Making it work. They kind of did it under our noses yeah. for a while. I mean, it was like nun, Annabelle. We knew nun. it was a spinoff, sure. But then the Nun comes yeah. out. They kind of connect it. They got to do the other. What's the other one that the who's the the Sleeping Man? What's it called? Oh, Slender the Crooked Man. man. The Crooked Man. Weren't they supposed to do the Crooked it, Man? Yeah, last we heard it was in development, yeah. but I, we haven't heard much. We, we're getting Conjuring Three next. Uh, as far as the universe, and then I don't know where it's. Going I will say, as a friend, last night I really appreciate you. Oh yeah, so I, I got a text. Oh. So here's the, here's the text. Oh, that that's I'm, right. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the text, then we'll go to break. This is, it's, and and I went through a lot of emotions <laughs> during this text. Um, <laughs> all right, so here's the uh, here's the text. And from, we had just sat down to dinner. The wife and I went out yeah, for date night yeah. last night. And, 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 I, and I understand where you where'd were. You com- go? The Palm. Oh, I love the Palm. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. All right, right, so here here's the here's the here's the the text from Makuga. It says, "Is Pet Cemetery happening?" Because I'm supposed to take him. So this is him knowing that he had to do this thing for the bit. And if he follows it up, I'm just trying to figure out my night because the missus was asking. <laughs> so as I'm going through that, because I hadn't gotten a kind of a response yet, and I was like, "Yeah, I could figure it out. What's what's happening as far as a plus one goes?" And then my head started going into yesterday's show. And how she's feeling about Vegas it. Yeah. and all of that stuff. <laughs> and, he, and when he wrote, the missus was asking, What the fuck? 
Yeah, <laughs> I, I said, I said, I don't know. I said the bit will be good. It'll be good, but I don't know if it's worth it because then he's because he, then I wrote this is what I wrote back. I said, you know what? As your friend and knowing about your weekend, be with your wife. <laughs> I said we'll find another one, and then I wrote it. And then he was like, "Yeah, that's the, yeah, we, yeah." We got and it. I appreciate that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so we got. It. I, here's the thing: is she would just ask me what the night was like, but I was also like, "Us sent me back a little bit, right?" I, I've seen the trailer for Pet Cemetery. I don't, I don't want anything to do with this one because that looks like all jump scares. Like that whole thing is going to be. I, I hear it's terrifying. Yes. I don't know if I'm going to see it. Oh see, um, Pet Cemetery. Yeah. 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 I hear it's I terrifying. Yeah. yeah. I hear it's terrifying. Oh, oh, I hear it's great. I mean, listen. I went to us because I know eventually I'm getting to Morton's dinner. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. after celebration, we have a nice night. Yeah. Whatever. We're doing it. Okay. <laughs> you haven't done it yet. No, we said it was going to be in April. The yeah, Pet was... Cemetery was just for the bit. Yeah, right. So it it too will be for the bit. Yeah. Although I'll tell you what, it is, for the bit. This is one thing though. If I see this movie, I'm going to see it tonight. But if I after I see it, I'm like, wait a minute. He needs to see this. Then I might just take him to Burbank 16 and and, and do it and get a yard house lunch out of yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go to break. When we come back, Forward we're going to talk about this uh, this trailer because we all watched the Joker trailer and we have a lot to say about it. We will do that and then Jai Courtney in at 11:30. Hey, Collider fans, John Roca here. Look that behind me. There it is, Collider Sports. That's right, that is happening. We've got some great programming on there already. For those of you that have already watched, thanks so much. we got so much coming down the pike. We're talking about NFL. We're going to talk about NBA. There's plans about NHL. Golf is in the equation now. And, of course, the Premier League show that I host with Jack Hind, that's been in motion for the last couple of weeks. And then an MMA show is on the way from Dennis Zhang, me, and Jay Williams. All those things are happening here at Collider. And, look, we want to hear from you, so we want you to listen. We want you to watch if you're a sports fan. Even if you're not a sports fan, we might entertain you, teach you something new about a sport that you may not have known much about or maybe so deep into it that you wanted to learn even more about it. We've got you covered. You can do that. Follow us on iTunes and on YouTube. You can there watch all the shows uh, or listen to all the shows that you want and then leave us comments and rate uh, the shows as well and review them. And then let us know what other sports you want us to cover. Look, we're not touching rugby. I'll just tell you that right now. That's as far out as we'll go, uh, or cricket, but uh, maybe in the future, if we go Collider Worldwide, that's certainly a possibility. But for right now, Collider Sports is there for you. Take a look at it, take a watch, and let us know what you think. Oh, hi guys, it's Perry here, and I am gonna tell you about The Witching Hour. It is the show that I host along with Collider.com's Haley Fouch. It is in podcast form on the Collider Factory feed, and we also have the video up and running every Tuesday for you right there on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. We talk about everything horror. We're talking TV, movies, the newest releases. We talk about movies that are celebrating anniversaries. We've even talked about books. It's crazy. If it is scary, we are talking about it on The Witching Hour. We also have so many filmmaker interviews, really cool stuff. It's all coming your way every single Tuesday on The Witching Hour. Check it out. Collider Factory and the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. Ugh. Hello, Collider Live. My name is Amy Dallin. And I'm Corey Jondro, and we host a little show we love called Collider Heroes. And it is all of the things we love about movies, TV, comics themselves, all the breaking news, trailers, photos, but not paparazzi photos. <laughs> all of the superhero stuff we love, all of the indie comic stuff we love, all the stuff you had no idea was based on comics. 80 years of comic lore have led to this show and many years in film and TV, and we're living in a golden age of comics, and we want to share all of that zeal with you folks. So we talk about the stuff that's coming out, we talk about what we hope is coming out, we do fantasy casting of things that should exist, why don't they exist? And we do your Twitter questions asking directly to us what we think of certain things, and every single week, since we both actually love and read physical comics, buy and print, we have a comic pull list where our five biggest favorite books of the week come out, and we dive into those with you guys. You can buy digital, I'll forgive you, as long as you're paying for your comics, it's all good. But if you buy in print, you can bag them and board them, and then they're worth more later, because comics are like certain things 
things from the 90s that are totally worth the value. Buy comics, <laughs> buy in print. Digital's never worth anything later. Buy in print, keep comic stores alive. Our, we can debate collector's items all day long. We can debate casting. We can debate movie, movie news. We can have all of our friends come join us, as we frequently do. We can ask professionals about their work. We've had some amazing guests come by the show. Yep. We try and to have catch it every Wednesday. That are on these properties that also love comics. You hear what it's like from their perspective, from inside, from outside. And this is all with the focus of bringing all this news to you guys. And we're here every Wednesday on Collider. And we love this stuff. We want to share it with you guys. We'll see you then. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. That's right, they gave Riley his own podcast. The Riley Roundtable is on its new home. It drops every Thursday. The Riley Roundtable is a little bit about everything. It's about movies and life, life and movies and everything in between. I like to have on special guests for discussions like Justice League versus Batman v Superman, for discussions about wine tasting, for discussions about UFOs, and everything in between. That's right, the Riley Roundtable drops on Thursdays on the one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff podcast feed and later on Collider Video's own podcast video network. So check it out every Thursday, the Riley Roundtable. See you there. Hey, everyone. John Roca here, one of the hosts for Collider Sports Time. That's our new show there on the Collider Sports Network. It's our flagship show, just like Collider Movie Talk. We get on, talk about a bunch of sports issues of the day and what is burning up social media, what topics are burning up social media. That's what we do on Collider Sports Time. I'm joined by my top 10 co-host, Matt Nost. Me and him, we welcome a bevy of guests every week to talk about NFL. The Major League Baseball playoffs, NHL, and the NBA, which is starting up soon. We're going to talk about that. We also get into UFC stuff, college football, all the stuff that's happening in the world of sports. We're going to cover it on Collider Sports Time. And we're going to take the time to break it all down and give our opinions and our unique takes and unfiltered thoughts on what we think about the sports news of the day. So don't forget to join us every week on Monday for the Collider Sports Time show on the Collider Sports Network. And don't forget to subscribe on the Collider Sports Network on YouTube and on the Collider Sports Podcast feed. We're going to bring you all kinds of stuff. Hope to hear from you soon. Welcome back, everybody. It is Collider Live. And this is the, this is the, uh, this is the music from 1989's Batman. There you go. Ooh, I know, there I know. you go. That one I know. Playing in the right, uh, right, right time span there, Cody. It's I, when they're climbing the... Church Tower, right? Or no? This is the Church Tower yeah. scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely is. Um, yeah. So anyway, the, 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 playing it into the theme of the Joker trailer that dropped today, we talked about the poster for a while uh, yesterday. And the uh, this trailer dropped, Todd Phillips' movie. It is starring Joaquin Phoenix. I don't know if I'm more excited for a movie mm, than, than this. this one. This, I mean, this... It, was he, it in your most anticipated list? It was already in there, but I mean, it's jumping up, man. I mean, obviously, I want to see episode nine, and there's a there's a few other things, Avengers, but like this this movie, man, it it's it's got that Martin Scorsese vibe because remember yeah. he was supposed to direct. They, like they talked Mean Streets. Yeah. It looked at Mean Streets, King of Comedy. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, yeah. And I think you yeah. you think you said it earlier that it just it, the New York looks so gritty mm. and like and and it was like, it looked like an Dirty. old Scorsese film to where and Roca said this in our our reaction to it is that it looks like New York is part. Uh, it's a character yeah. inside of the movie, but it was an origin story. Um, it's an origin story of the Joker, and it just really chronicles what we've always known that he is the exact opposite of what Batman is, right? right? And you see how he got there in this trailer. You don't give away too much, but you show like how he was this abused, uh, not abused, but he he was taking care of his taking care of his mother, but then he was beaten up by these people. And, he, and the yeah. first time you see him get hit, he's like in pain in the alley. And the next time you see him get hit, he's like cracking up and he's right. laughing. He's like, you see, like the, just the psychosis, just kind of the craziness happening and the totally. transformation in the trailer. I loved this trailer. What did you think about it, Ross? Oh, it was so good. So awesome. It was so good. It shows what an extremist he is. Yeah. And just like taking regular advice to the next level, right. like you know, find a way to be happy or make a joke out of it or take this lightly and just. Uh, it was really cool to watch. It yeah. was really cool. He looks like he's gonna be. This is right. This is tailor made for him. Yeah, it's such he's, a great He looks role like he's him. gonna be one of the best because he's kind of a crazy dude himself, yeah. right? Um, I, I love. Is what, that true? Yeah, yeah. Um, he was eccentric. Yeah, eccentric. That's. I mean, he's a, he's an artist. He's a he's a character. I mean, uh, he's a method guy. Did you see him in that movie? That movie this past year. No, no, no. Uh, I think that 
Cody or here? Copster loved it. Which one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you were never really You were never really you were never here. Hit, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Did you guys see that? I, I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I, I, it was not for me, yeah. but he was so like good. The, Kind of like the Joker in it almost. Have no, you ever seen a movie with him that is even bad that you walked out going, "Oh, he was terrible but in not. that." It's, yeah. No, never. never. He's just he's, yeah. he gives it his all in every single movie that he's in. I mean, from Parenthood. I mean, yeah, was, yeah. he was in Parenthood when he yeah. was when he was Leaf. He was Leaf, and, and he's he's just so so yeah. good. And this was a, when he was cast in this role. You, oh yeah, you know, you're take it to a Joker style yeah. level because. What we saw with Heath Ledger mm -hmm. was what everybody is, holds as a gold standard. Now, listen, 1989 Batman is my favorite Batman and yes. whatever. But that, that performance as the Joker was is the defining performance, I think, in the franchise of all Batmans all time. It's like, that's the performance, whatever. What we just saw from Joaquin Phoenix just in this trailer is like, Joker seems like he's just a very nice human being that's been just put to this thing, but then something switches off in Does a like really nice. I think he's, even when he's taking care of his mother, he like dumps the water in her face. Yeah, and it's like it's playful, but it's still like. No, I think it's exactly what you're saying. This is playing with the message of nature versus nurse, yeah. mm -hmm. nurture, and part of the fact is that he was born this way. He was born Not this fully, way, right? And, and had other things like gone different ways, or had he been told different right. things, or whatever? Who knows? But this is both nature and nurture. Right. Um, I have a question for you, Roxy Shrey. Someone in this room and do not and I don't want anyone making faces someone in this room has been in a movie with Joaquin Phoenix who is that person you no Riley nope Josh McCuga. It really is. Yeah, we, we own, own the night. night. Mm. Yeah, that's right. He was. He was. Uh, he was the brother of Mark Wahlberg, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Joaquin Phoenix was the brother yeah. of Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, I was uh, putting you last because I feel like you usually, uh, in, in a nice way, like, always brag about it. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> open up with that kind of thing. No, yeah. I, that, uh, what was really cool is it was the first background work I ever did in New yeah. York. I think I've told this story on Schmoes or whatever. Um, and I get to this club in the Bronx and it's the opening scene, right? So the opening of We Own the Night, uh, Joaquin Phoenix and Ava Mendes had this super sexual scene on like a couch in this club. And then Joaquin Phoenix comes walking into this club and it was shot in an old movie theater that they had turned into a club in the Bronx. And I got there and, it, and We Own the Night, it takes place in the 80s. Like that, that scene takes place in the 80s. And I have this members only coat on that I own and it was a members only. And because they told the background, like, if you have any 80s clothes, could you yeah. please bring them, whatever. And then if we don't like it, wardrobe dress me in again and get you to bring up that picture if you can. Yeah. And I get, to, I get to the wardrobe and um, and the guy's like, nope, perfect. You're perfect. You go. So I get up there and there's this club scene going on. And all of a sudden it's like, all right, and let's cue the girls. And three girls get up and stand on the bar and they take their tops off. And I was like, what is yeah. going on look, here? Look, there he is. Yeah, look, there's me and we on the night. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, it's a great jacket. And, yeah. You still have that jacket? Oh, I still yeah. have it. Yeah, hey, it was my really grandfather's like actually. There. Jeez. <laughs> so, and then... Uh, all of a sudden, this like fight breaks out. Yeah. And is that what you're looking at right there? Yeah, the fight is breaking out yeah. here. And this is his best buddy, right. like conciliary yeah, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I forget that. that actor's name. He's a I really nice that guy, dude. Yeah. Which but one? The one in the French church? The guy holding the beer. Oh. The guy holding the beer. I mean, there's, yeah, there's Josh McCoy. Yeah, you're in a couple shots. So, um, so. All of a sudden, they, the fight breaks out, and the director, I think the director was Brad Gray, if I'm not mistaken. No, he was a producer. Was right. he a producer? Did, Brad Gray? It's a, James Gray. Yeah. I was is, say the, is that the director? Yeah. So, Sasha Gray. There, there's the old. <laughs> James that's, that's a different movie. It's the first, my first uh, He said it was a big, big, big make out, hot and heavy sex scene when he walked in. Right. Well, I didn't see that. So this is when Same. Joaquin Phoenix Sasha comes. Gray. So a fight breaks out, yes. right? And Joaquin Phoenix like basically grabs his buddy that's holding the yeah, beer, yeah. and then he pushes me out of the way. Joaquin the, pushed you out of the way? And it was kind of like nice. a, an improv moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the director stopped, and he goes, all right, we need you to stay right here. And he pointed at me, and he was like, ah. And he turned to his buddy. He's like, did we give him that members only? He was really excited yeah, yeah. that I had the members only. So... I'm I'm standing there. He's like, all right, let's do it. And we did this scene for like two days. We and did you, this that kind was your of jacket? scene. That was my That's jacket great. in there. And I got a SAG waiver on it because at one point he's like, hey, yell something. Yell something like, look out or watch out. So I said, watch out. They cut the line, but they gave me a SAG waiver because they great. gave me a job. They gave great. me a line That's in hysterical. it. hysterical. 
And we're and when We Own the Night comes out, I just moved to Los Angeles. Oh, right? okay. So I was living in New York. I was like, I moved a few months later. We Own the Night comes out. I went to see it in the theater, and I'm, I was with a girl who I was dating at the time. And you're on the big screen. You're my face pops up for like a full second, like it's a quick second. Yeah. And as a kid who was just a background thing, it, it pops on the thing, and the girl next to me goes, "Whoa!" Like she screams. She's <laughs> the, still, the stills make it look like you have a much bigger yeah. part. I know. I know. <laughs> the stills totally. make it seem like you're you're part of the action. I was so excited thinking that, oh my god, all right. So this is my first background role. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get yeah. asked to be in a movie. Da 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 da. <laughs> no, I did like ten more backgrounds. Did you guys talk and, at all? You and Joaquin? He was. He was. He's a classic method actor. So on the call sheet, it's his name, not Joaquin the Phoenix. It's name. the character's name. Nobody else is allowed to refer to him as anything else but that. In between the things, he stays in character. He doesn't want anybody talking wow. to him. Like he is, he is Joaquin Phoenix. I yeah. mean, he is that character. Right, right, right. So, so he's not. Well, really that's why you can imagine what the Joker's like. Because you see him. I mean, he just it. It seems like a couple of the roles that he's, or a couple of things that he's used for other roles. For the Master is another one, right? Like, yeah. Because that scene, I've, we've shown it, we've talked about it on yeah. the show, when he's throwing the. He's th- when he's taking pictures of that guy and then he just loses and snaps on the guy and he gets into the fight in the middle of the department store. I feel you're going to see a lot of that type of stuff in this movie. Um, it, it is going to, I think that there's, because it comes out in October, there's a chance that you can, depending on what the performance is like, there's a chance for awards yeah. possibilities. The other thing is that I what? think, is it what awards maybe best think? actor, but here's how I'm going to spin this also too, is I think that. The I think Todd Phillips is also someone that you should be talking about a lot after seeing this trailer because Todd Phillips is primarily known for comedies and The Hangover and things of that nature. And he did War Dogs, which is a, was a shift, still had a lot of comedic elements. But this, I think, will do for him what um, the what the Big Short did for Adam McKay and what mm-hmm. Vice did for Adam McKay. Good call. This, this will shift people's perception on Todd Phillips because it looks like someone else directed it, and that's a good thing because it'll change the perception of what he's able to do. Do you think he might get nominated? Depends on the film. If, if the trailer lives up to what the movie is, then he damn well should. And I think the movie, think too. You think yeah. it's possible think the it, movie will get nominated yep. for I screenplay think, or for best picture? I think mm, best picture, I think we stuff. could, I, d- d- depending on, you know, everybody says Taxi Driver. Everybody yeah. has been comparing this, yeah. uh, even the filmmaker. So if we get a gritty, very emotional kind of deep dive on this character yeah. and, it, and it really hits with critics and, and audiences, I think it could be. Is, so if you guys had to say yes or no, Across the board, if this movie gets nominated for anything at the Oscars, best actor, best actor. No, but I'm not saying which one. Oh. I'm saying yes or no. Does it get nominated for something for in some something? category? It's hard to say without seeing the movie, though. Yeah. I, know, I know. Yeah, right that's, now, that's, that's, the of, that's the point of the question. House, house <laughs> money right <laughs> no, now, right? <laughs> Monopoly no, money. We can just judge it from yeah, the trailer. I don't know. Yeah, just based off the trailer. Just based off the trailer. If everything clicks, if it, everything clicks the way that the trailer, if if it actually delivers, yeah. then yes. Because look at Logan. Because it looks at like, Logan's first trailer was awesome. Ju- I can't judge it on a two minute trailer. Is it going to get nominated? I don't know. It's but a two minute trailer. That's why it's like one of those gun to your head questions, man. Yeah. It's just like a fun yeah, thing to play. Yeah, it goes, I'm not playing that. I'll, I'll play with you, Roxy. I think yes because yeah. I've seen it. The president, Logan. Like it. The trailer was fantastic. That movie comes out as great. I'm just going off trailers here. Right. Yeah, but, but you have Joaquin all you have Phoenix, to go off of. But you didn't. But you didn't see it. I couldn't. You asked me about Logan after seeing the trailer of Logan before seeing the movie. I said it's possible. So you would have said yes or no, and then if. If you were right or wrong, it wouldn't have mattered at all because nothing's on the line here. No, nah, <laughs> still not doing it. I'm going You're off like, a Dark Knight as well. Dark Knight, you know, yeah. caused the I Academy love, to, yeah. to put ten nominees. It. So Josh. I love hypothetical questions. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Roxanne has a show called it. Whatever. I love asking anybody that wants to answer. When somebody goes, Ah, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Fuck off! It's a yes or no question. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen I the know movie. You don't hey, Christian. Know. Um, I know you don't hey, know. Hey, hey, hey Christian. Uh, you're gonna. I'm gonna have to have you sacrifice one of your children to answer this question. Oh yeah. No, all right, all right. Look, so, so we know Smart Scorsese is going to be directing a movie in two or three years from now, right? You haven't seen the trailer. You haven't seen, is it possible? Is it going to get nominated for an Oscar? You did see the trailer. Could no, be. Martin Scorsese. Scorsese. No, no, no. Not as Mark Scorsese. It's Todd Phillips. But Martin Scorsese is coming up with a movie in like two years from now. Okay. Is it going to get nominated? Yeah. Probably. It's Martin Scorsese. It's, it's, a, it's a guess. <laughs> but this uh, is more fun because just based off this trailer, how we're gushing about it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not playing. <laughs> I'm not playing. Look, I'm not, if this sure. was a spinoff and it was Jared Leto and this yeah. was, it, you know, another DC, you know, connected to After yeah. Suicide if Squad. It, if it delivers, the, if it's a great movie, then yeah, of course. This is Joaquin Phoenix. Shot. He's get, he, <laughs> I can see him getting a Let me ask a, you a nomination. question. Yeah. Because so the three people that have most recently played the Joker, <laughs> yeah. okay, you have Heath Ledger, Leto. Jared Leto, and Joaquin Phoenix, all crazy method yes. actors. 
is that one of these things of like a let's put these people in a bin and these are the only people that could play Joker kind yeah. of a situation. So let's put those. You have one other like method actor in Hollywood right now. Who do you think could play a Joker? And all the method actors that we have, like the you know, like I mean, well, Daniel Day Lewis ain't gonna do it. No, he's yeah. not gonna do it. I mean, no, I get an older not, version he'd be of it. Great. Who are the method? I, don't, I guess because I don't know who all the method actors are. So <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess. Bit. I mean, then maybe that's a stupid question. But I'm just I'm thinking out loud here because each Joker has been one version of a yeah. person that's well known to be a you method actor. You gotta get him to dive in, man. Yeah, mm. you gotta get him to dive in. You I think it's one of those characters too that obviously we know from Heath Ledger and it's a very sad story, but he said it was so hard to come back from that character. But Michael Jai White said that that wasn't. The case. And also, Michael J. White said that he was in between takes joking around with them and was not being method. Right. So I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. That's a great. By the way, if you haven't checked that out, the Michael J. White clips on the podcast channel or even on the full interview on the episode, he dove in a lot. He was so like raw and unfiltered. I, lo- I, really I, I loved that dude, man. He was just he was just straight up. Just no. This is how he talked about Nolan and the, the Tyson stuff. I mean, it was yeah. it was great. But that's why I'm also excited to hear to talk to Jai Courtney in a little bit. A lot so, of Jai. So, so we're Jai and Jai. Yeah, we're Jai and right. So well, we're going to talk to him because he's coming in. He's, and he's coming in to talk about his film Storm Boy, which opens up on April um, 5th, and we'll talk to him about that. We'll definitely throw in a couple of the Suicide Squad questions in there for him for sure. Uh, get his thoughts on some things. I wonder if he's watched the trailer too. I'd be Curious to ask him if he's, what he thinks of Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker, or if he thinks that it's going to win an Oscar or not. <laughs> Hypothetically, you, ask, you, you should ask him a You should ask him that question and see how he answers it. I was like, how, how can you guess? That? It's you different seen the movie? me asking the guest and me we co- we co-host a show together. We do. It was just a <laughs> it was just a question. Like, yeah. hey, you think it's going to win an Oscar? I, I, I don't can't. know. I, I said don't. I got to see the movie. Hey Christian, I if you uh, if you see the trailer for uh, Star yeah. Wars, yeah. And, is it uh, going to win an mo- uh, Oscar? It, don't know. I got to see the movie. <laughs> is it possible? Sure, it's possible. Sure, I got to see the movie. I didn't even say win. I just said nominated. You don't get nominated. <laughs> and I said if the movie's good, yeah, sure. that's it's uh, pretty. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Anything else happening? I know. That, what's this? So Black Widow again. Black Widow. Rachel Weisz circling key role in Marvel standalone films. So what a Jeez. cast. Wow, what a cast! So that dress was one of wow. the most unfortunate dresses I have ever seen. Oh, this was the, uh, the yeah, you guys talked about like leather. This no, it was that rubber. Oh, like. rubber. Listen, let me tell you something. Rachel Weisz can wear whatever the fuck she wants yeah. to wear. <laughs> oh, she's stunning and talented, and I love her. Yeah. But I saw what her was that? at a Chipotle in New York. And this was before Chipotle blew up. Yeah. And I walked into the Chipotle. It was right on Hudson. I don't know if it's, it was like West Side, you know, like down in that West and Village area. Da, 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 da. And I, I, I just like double take, and I was like, "What is she doing here?" Yeah. Right? And then I did the creepy Roxy stand outside the conversation thing, yeah. where I was like, "Oh, she's getting soda. I should get a soda." And like, kind of, you That's know. Weird. And then, yeah, totally. And then she walked out, just like nobody was bothering her as the breeze. And New I York, thought that was New my York's one like chance, that, my one chance to say, "Hey, I loved you," and whatever. Whatever. But I just. You know, you just appreciate alone. the beauty that was the perfection of Rachel was. You can tell the story. That's all you need to do. You she, think after yeah. the E. coli, she stopped going? Probably. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> Here comes Debbie Downer. Right? This is the classic Roxy move. It's right. like, not, not trying to add to the story. Hey, just you've like, had, hey. You've had a burrito there before. Do you think in three years they'll be shut down? Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, probably. Probably, okay. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you've, had, you've had a burrito. Before. I've had a burrito. But it could win an Oscar. You don't know what's going to happen with the restaurant, but do you think it's going to shut down? I didn't down? say put your car on it. <laughs> I'm with Roxy on this one. I'm not with any of you. I don't care. I don't care about. I don't care about. I don't care about any one of you except Josh. Play a game. I care about none of you. No, this is not a game. There's something going outside of your head that I don't want anything to do with. I know what you're trying to do, and I'm not going to go with it. You sound like Jason Statham. I do. That's what he said to me. Oh, is that what he said? I know what you're trying to do. I know what you're trying to do, and I'm not going to fall for it. Do you know what I mean? Oh my. Come on, I'm ask not, you a question. No, you're oh, trying to make me look stupid. I'm not going to fall. Look stupid. That's what I, think, I, I have this this sneaking suspicion that if I shave my head, I'm going to look like Jason Statham. But I know that's not going to happen. happen no. But that's what I keep telling a man. I was like, you love like, Jason you, Statham. You should go shave, go and then you'll look like Severus. Yeah, do that thing. Yeah. I'm going to miss no. it. <laughs> no, no, Brad. Cody says no. No, it's not bad. I just I'm going to miss it. I like the poof. Yeah. Poof the poof's been well we like the poof. I love the poof. Um, what is this thing? What is this? is ridiculous. Just play it. What is this? This is, is this? so. There is a. <laughs> what is this? It's like in I can't remember where Middle America, and it's like testing week for the students, and so the news anchors. Oh. Did you see this? Yeah, this is stupid. You didn't like it? It's no. hysterical. Oh, this was ridiculous right. in the worst way oh, because they weren't trying. Yeah. They they were really right, trying. Start, no, start, yeah. start from the beginning. But this wasn't a, this wasn't a joke. This was no. A they were real. trying to actually yeah. do this. Yeah, I know. Toledo. Students, it is testing week, and it's time to slay all day. 
Stay woke, be on fleek, and get that Gucci breakfast. Goals! Say bye, Felicia, to that testing stress. <laughs> Weather's gonna be turned, Just right, wait. Chris? Yes! Toledo weather gonna be relit during testing <laughs> week. A hundo P chance of success. You got this, kids. Steve, how about that traffic? Are we looking oh <laughs> better than oh <laughs> We're talking turn. FOMO won't turn. be an issue. No traffic problems around any TPS schools to keep you from taking those tests. I like oh, dogs right. with cameras and this. <laughs> this is this this I love too. Good. I love this it's, too. Yes. Because what do you Stupid. think? What do you think happened? So, uh, someone, someone out of touch giving notes. Yes. Said, Let's try to do they, this. And they all had to reverse How could you that. Guess that when you weren't there and you haven't seen it. You don't know. <laughs> it's just a guess, Roxy. <laughs> it's just a guess. <laughs> It's just a guess. Well, Do you think this is going to get nominated for an Emmy? Um, it depends. <laughs> it depends on how the full show was. This okay. is only a segment out of the it's show. True. It's oh, true. It's only true. a segment. You got to kind of stay with the I kind of like that. I yeah, that's, would, you're just like, yeah, it's a bunch of just, I had a touch morons. I would watch yeah, this, though. That's what's I'd funny. I'd watch it. Let me say, let me oh, let me like just SNL. say this as a guy who grew up in a, in a town with you know it's sort of like mid major market people. yeah it's, it, it, we our local news my parents w were both teachers so they woke up very very early and so we, they would watch one of the news channels one of the three news channels every morning and it was always so boring but to see local news people do this kind of fun stuff that like. It warms the soul a little yeah. bit. Is it goofy? Of course it right. is. But is it is it fun? Yeah, it's fun. And if it can get you like a little bit of national attention, by all and, means. And it, it certainly did. Yeah. Can you guys do that okur thing? No. I don't okur. Know. No. See, okur. she suckered you into it. You know, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Roxy's messing with us today. I don't like She's it. really coming yeah, at it. Really like we it. opened the show with Roxy. I've got bones to pick with you. Here's everything <laughs> that you, you do didn't wrong. watch The Matrix. Yeah, and you were just being mean and rotten to and us. And the thirteen thing. What? What's Which I that? thought was true. What's the 13th? Oh, you're right. You're making people piss and shit yeah. for 14 hours on a But bus. here's what I don't understand then. Why were they taking it up with SAG if they're only there for three hours? Listen, I got nothing to tell you. Uh, oh, well, SAG is like every three hours you have to take a 15 minute break. Oh, look at this. Which will, happen, which yeah. will happen first? Me seeing the thing or Roxy watching the Matrix? 100% I'll watch Matrix before Christian sees the thing. You think so? yeah. All somebody would have to do is buy it for me like they did for you. Oh, yeah. And then you would just watch it right away? It's, yeah. also, yeah. On, it's also on Netflix. I think. It's everywhere. Really? Yeah. For free? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's I, also always on TV. And always. I don't have TV. I would love Correct. to get your. Uh, Got it. So, wait, what should Josh McCuga do with his hair? Yeah. Leave that beauty on 23%. Go Baldy or Mohawk it Go up. Go Mount Baldy. When I say mountain, uh, no. where, where's the uh, where's the uh, the picture of him with the with the Mohawk? I used to be up here. Oh, we got the new picture. This, this new Collider Live picture. I don't oh, think I'm in see. that picture. It's, you know what I realized? Hand it to me. You need yeah. Riley. Like, they put Ellis yeah. in there. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. You are in there. Can you give it to me? Riley's not. VR guy. Riley's not. Yeah, I lost it. Yeah. No. You can't see it? Yeah. You're in there. You're in there somewhere. I just want to see it. Yeah, my head's the size of a boulder. <laughs> it is. That ridiculous. Yeah. I think I'm the boulder Facts. chasing him in a VR mask. That makes sense. You are. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I that's what you are. I just got that. There you go. Nice, Riley. I just got that. Riley just did an espresso shot. Yeah. yeah. Is that yeah. everything going on in the world of news? Yeah, man. There's a, We covered it. We covered it all. Yeah. <laughs> tomorrow is finally getting a fucking sequel. Except for that. Is that true? Except for that. That is it true. Is, Do you guys want a sequel. directional update? Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Are you, gonna, are you messing with us or are you going to actually be nice? No, I'm no. not messing with you. Right. So today I Ubered here because I'm going straight to the airport and... Uh, the Uber driver just kept asking me, like, is there a better way to go? And I was like, Do your job. Listen, man. Is there a better I'm way not to the get... right person right. to ask. Like, you listen to my show and you will know. And every turn we took, I was like, mm. Are you flying out of Burbank? No. Um, but I mean, that's a, but that, come on, that's a bad Uber driver. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it took us a long time to get here. Let me ask you a question with the Ubers because. I, I don't know where to stand on this. I, I, do you not take them very often? No, I do. But my but my thing is that I understand that sometimes, especially when I'm not in a mood, I don't want to talk to anybody, right? Uh, except, except the parents that I do the drop off with. But uh, clearly. But when I'm but do you because I saw David Spade tweeted this out a while ago about you know Uber drivers when they when they're overly talking to you when you're trying to work in the back and stuff, mm -hmm. but you don't want to be rude, you know, you have the conversation. Where, where do you where do you stand on it? Headphones. Well, yeah, but I mean, you're still ignoring, I don't have you're still ignoring the person that, that way. It's like, do you because if I, gotta, I know that I'm not going to be in a talkative mood before I walk in the you car, you put the headphones, headphones on so they know that they won't engage. Yeah. Because I had, I, I went like, last week, I had to pick up my wife's car, and the guy, it's really, really nice guy. I mean, it couldn't have been a nicer guy, but he just wouldn't stop talking. Well, a lot of them do it to network. 
Yeah. And that's why they're doing it. And they're hoping they meet somebody like you, Christian, right. and that you say, you know what you should do? You should come on my show. Right. That's literally what they're hoping you, for. And and it's smart because you meet so many people. But I work in insurance when I get on there. But I was yeah, yeah. see I wasn't yeah, I was too. I was completely I had a conversation with him. I was gonna be rude to him, sure. but I but I'm I'm in the middle of trying to like send emails because I had like twenty minutes to get to this car ride. I'm like, okay, I can get a sh- lot of shit done here. And I'm in the middle of doing this and he's just going on and I'm like, Yeah, let's talk and then I'm going back it's just I don't know the, the etiquette. Yeah. Like she, I think you can say I'm so sorry I'm in the middle of a, a work thing. Uh, give me one sec. R- well, right, but even but when that one sec is over, you still got to have the conversation. Well, I think one, I just like one, one sec can anybody. turn into twenty minutes. I know. Right? I don't like. I don't like to talk. I, I like when I'm in this. I like to just kind of sit back and relax. But every like fifteen minutes, you can just say, "Oh, this is so crazy." Yeah, it's what huh. you're putting that's on an the interesting, show. That's an but interesting you, tactic. You're not yeah. wrong. You're not wrong in that, but it's easy. I know what you mean. It's awkward, and it's I awkward. and I totally get it. Yeah. And, and sometimes they just want to yap your ear off. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes get, it's fine. But I get it also too. You're driving around oh, all day, okay. not talking to anybody, and people come in. And you're like, "Hey, how's it going?" I remember. It, it, it has nothing against it. Have nothing against have you guys ever, just, have, just, just, have you ever asked an Uber driver to like change the music and or because I was one yeah. time got in a car yeah. in LAX and this woman was listening to like. Some erotic fan fiction on oh. like Audible. It was <laughs> wow. It was pretty it's intense. Awkward. I swear. I got picked up at LAX and it's I get in. Intense. For like seven uh, minutes, it was like, whoa. I think this it's is wild when they're listening to yeah. anything super loud. It's yeah, like man. wild. Oh. All right, that's perfect. I mean, Listen, that was a good transition out of it. We're gonna get out of here. When we get back, when we come back. We are going to be speaking with Jai Courtney. He is in the film Storm Boy, which comes out April 5th. Jai Courtney will be in studio with us, Cloud Alive. There. No, it's not late to the party. That's actually from Obi-Wan Kenobi. You didn't know that? Well, you should, and now you do. Jedi Council, what is it? It's about Star Wars, obviously. It's Jedi Council. Every week, the latest and greatest in Star Wars movie news, myself and Ken Knapsack, that's right, the pit boss himself, we have a guest on, and we talk about everything happening in the world of Star Wars. If it's the movie news, the TV news, canon news, comic books, games, and then we take questions from you guys on Facebook and Twitter. It's a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a couple of years now. I'm still excited talking about it. The fan base is coming together again. I believe it is. I think it is. I hope it is. And we're talking Star Wars, so we like you. That's right. All of you, if you're not a fan of Star Wars, come on over and join us every Thursday for Collider Jedi Council here on Collider Video. And we have an Apple Podcast feed or Podcast One, wherever you want to go if you listen to podcasts. And not only do you get Collider Jedi Council every week on Thursday, The Rule of Two with Mark Fernandez and Mark Riley, that's on every week. I believe it drops on Wednesday. It's on one of these days. It's a good show. You should listen to it. I like it. I listen to it. I haven't listened to it once. Hey, guys. Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com. And if you're a pro wrestling fan, which... I hope you are, even if it's in secret, then you should be checking out Wrestling Sheet Radio Weekly. Uh, We've got a bunch of shows in the podcast feed. We've got weekly recaps from myself and John Rocha, which you guys will probably know from the Collider family. Uh, That's for Raw. That's for SmackDown. We've also got the weekly roundup of wrestling news. It's a show I host called Wrestling Sheet Radio with Jamie Iovine and Elijah Bates. And we've also got a bunch of other stuff in our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. So check it out. Subscribe. And I hope you guys dig it. Hey guys, Perry here to remind you to tune in for Collider Movie Talk every single Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 4 p.m. PT live. We are live, we talk about movies, we answer your live Twitter questions. It's so much fun. We talk about everything from box office to all your favorite superhero movies. We talk about horror on a good day for me. And who knows, maybe even a spoonerism will happen. I don't know. That's what happens when you watch Collider 2 v Mock, right? Are you going to watch? You better watch. Go watch now. What's up, Collider fans? If you are a fan of television and you want to watch a guy that looks like me and a guy named Thad Williams talk about TV every single Friday, subscribe to the Collider channel. Collider Podcast is where you can find the video. Uh, We have our own iTunes feed, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. You can find it on iTunes or wherever you find your podcast and you listen to them in your ear holes. That's where Collider TV Talk comes at you. We talk about TV news. We talk about shows we love, shows that we don't love, and most 
most importantly, we don't read any books because TV has nothing to do with reading. We also have a show called Hypothetical Questions with myself and Roxy Stryer and all kinds of reviews right here at the Collider Podcast Channel and the Collider TV Talk Feed. Subscribe, rate, like, tell your friends, tell all your friends to tell their friends, and before you know it, it's a pyramid scheme of television. I'm Josh McCuga. You can see Thad Williams and myself along with Roxy Stryer and all the Collider personalities all the time right here on Collider TV Talk. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. Rule of Two is a Star Wars podcast hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. It drops on the Jedi Council podcast feed every Tuesday. You like Star Wars? Good. I like Star Wars. And you know what we do? We talk Star Wars. And not only talking Star Wars, we celebrate Star Wars. We gave the Golden Lightsabers the best in Star Wars, best picture, best opening theme, best crawl, and all that good stuff. We celebrate the games of Star Wars. We do everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of debate and a lot of discussion thrown in the middle. So make sure you check out Rule of Two every Tuesday on the Collider Jedi Council podcast feed on iTunes and later on Collider Video. That's Rule of Two with Riley and Mark Fernandez every Tuesday. And may the force be with you. All right, everybody, we are back. It is Collider Live. And joining us live in studio, the new movie Storm Boy. It comes out April 5th. And one of the stars of that film, Jai Courtney, is here. Hello, Jai. How are you, man? How are you hello, doing? Hello, hello. It's good to have you. We were, we were just kind of laughing off uh, off air here that it's it, it was, we were putting on the cans. It's hard to do with that. How you did yeah, it, though. You I made it work. I messed up. I got it. I was hooked on here onto my ears. Fortunately, I've got some sturdy cartilage. So. <laughs> That's how all the cool kids wear it, behind. Yeah, right? it yeah. Yeah, 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 it's true. You're going to start a trend. That's it. That's, That's it. true. So, I mean, let, listen, let's talk about Storm Boy here up top because I um, I was, I, the film, first of all, the, the novel, it, I think it came out in the, in the 60s. Early 60s, it's yeah. 60s, based in the 50s and it was, and they based the playoff in, in Australia and I was reading just kind of how this version, because they made a movie in the in the 70s, but they, mm. the, this version of it um, kind of came along and the director, sorry, excuse me, Sean, Sean, Sean Seat, Seat yeah. and he came, uh, just his vision of it from the producer, like, this is the guy that's got to do it, and you get Jeffrey Rush, and mm-hmm. then, of course, mm-hmm. you know, who plays your son l- later on in life. So why, what was it, because you were, being Australian, you were pretty aware of this, of this yeah, thing? Yeah, my, like, virtually my, you know, whole generation, uh, and, and you know, generations after and before are, are all kind of, uh, have a relationship with this story. Yeah. Um, it's you know whether you remember learn, like studying the book in in elementary school in primary school when we were when we were really young or the film which was sort of one of those ones probably because kids were studying the book teachers would just like throw the you know VHS I in the last those. day of term yeah. you yes. know kill the last few hours right right yeah. and uh, and so we all kind of grew up on it and yeah. it's just like a classic and yeah there's been m- sort of multiple adaptations um, it went to stage uh, and obviously the the film and and so when I heard they were I guess doing another one, I was super intrigued and kind of excited. I was, I'd, I'd, I'd sort of been tipped off. There'd been a, a, a modern, a contemporary thread woven into the story, which um, isn't the case in the original, right. uh, which kind of like intrigued me and, and, and it was just handled so beautifully. Um, so that whole kind of modern story, Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's character being my son kind of 50 years later, uh, 60 years later is, is all an invention. Um, but it, it kind of weaves in well, and it and it and it sort of brings up some, um, you know, helpful stuff in the discussion around conservation yep. and his granddaughter and how that kind of relates to his memories of of growing up on Ninety Mile Beach with his father and and of course uh, adopting these orphaned pelican chicks, which is yeah. sort of what it's all about. Well, you know, the other thing was Sean. The, the, yeah, the other thing was Sean Seed that that I was reading about with the producers. What they liked about him, one of the reasons they wanted to bring him on, was his relationship with actors and the performances they can get. Right. Did you find that to be the case? Yeah, Sean's fantastic. He's a really um, sort of gentle collaborator. He sort of lets you just feel the space a lot and 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 you know catch a vibe or something. And and he's never kind of he's not someone that like forces his vision upon you so much. So, but um, more collaborative. Yeah, and very yeah. kind of he has a kind of. A, quite a passive approach he knows what he wants but he's just kind of his energy around the set and stuff is very gentle keeps it very cool which is helpful when you're working with youngsters and 
and animals. I think that's essential. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. there was no room for. Kind yeah, they, of say, they say don't work with animals, don't work with kids. He's like, no, nah, I'm gonna do it. He's like, I'm doing it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And the traditional animals too, like pelicans. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Hi, yeah, highly trainable. <laughs> you know. I'm, I'm curious after seeing this because it was a really, really sweet film, um, and I was excited for you and Jeffrey Rush. I'm big fans of both of yours, but you guys actually don't share the screen, obviously, because nah. you're playing his dad. Yeah. Did you get to meet him on set at all? Or yeah, you... I met Jeffrey just in pre-production. I mean, the way they, they cut the shoot up uh, in such a way that we we shot kind of all of my mine and Finn's work. Uh, Finn Little plays the plays the young fella. Um, he uh, We did that sort of in one segment and then they rolled into the contemporary stuff afterwards. So, they, you know, we really didn't, uh, you know, obviously share the camera at all, but, uh, but yeah. Is there, is there a certain amount of pressure that comes along with uh, bringing to life something so beloved? In your, you know, I mean, it'd be like doing Good Night Moon here, I right, guess, right, kind right, of right. situation. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? I think it's just it. I don't wear it as precious so much anymore. Uh, and my relationship with that's probably changed as I've been sort of hanging around a little longer in the in the business, like doing stuff that was adapted from books earlier on, or uh, kind of you know stories we'd heard before, or, or coming into a franchise, for instance, and kind of picking up where someone had left off. Is I found that a little trickier. Um, this was more, I mean, we had such a great script. That it's kind of like you, you you feel a responsibility to do a service to it, but mm -hmm. um, wasn't worried about it at Good all, to. you know. And it's such a, a slice of life movie, and it gives you guys a lot of room to breathe. I'm curious as an actor, when there's not that much stuff going on and it's more just about how you're living through life, how do you keep that fresh when, when there's not constantly action-packed or things happening? I think it's just a different kind of, you're just investigating the drama and it's all about relationships and so what becomes interesting is figuring out you know the the subtleties in your performance as opposed to like having things be driven forward by plot um you know it's and and that can be interesting and and kind of like tougher than than the other stuff you know in a way because you know you don't just have all this fodder to kind of work with it's it's about like picking apart the material and being like all right well what's really the emotional journey here and like, how does this father love his son? How does he show that? How does he not? What's he protecting? You know, how damaged is he through his grief that shifts the way he speaks to someone or sees the world? And um, it's just kind of being playing someone from another time but not so far back that I couldn't relate to it was, was kind of cool in that way because I looked to male influences in my life that I could see didn't necessarily, you know, have the relationships that we see in the movie but – you know, definitely had a different worldview or, or a different way of showing affection or, you know, the way they were sensitive about certain things shifted through generations. And, um, you know, I'm not a lot like Hideaway Tom, but I feel like I know that man because of, uh, you know, some of the people that I've grown up around. So, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about working with the animals, especially when they were as young as they were yeah. in the beginning? I was I was nervous for you guys on set. <laughs> Because they look so fragile. They they birds are. scare me a little yeah. bit, too. Yeah. What doesn't, what yeah. doesn't yeah. scare you? Yeah. Yeah. Everything scares me. <laughs> I'm a scaredy cat. It's, uh, it's full on. And it's kind of like, it, it's pretty intimidating. And, uh, you know, pelicans, that when they're fully grown, are, you know, you, you know them. They're Huge. very majestic yeah. kind of animals. And being up close and kind of being intimate in that space was, um, was really cool, but kind of pretty gnarly at the same time. Yeah. Uh, you know, when they're little, I mean, it's it's wild. It's so they're like tiny little dinosaurs. You know, it's yeah. and it's just they're ancient creatures. They're pretty amazing little things. <laughs> tiny and the, little dinosaurs. Well, I've never yeah, seen true. anything that looked Dude, like those, that. I yeah. mean, and we like to hold them right. was out of control. Like yeah. these tiny, they they're like little pterodactyls. Was the, was there like a bird handler kind of a yeah. person? Oh, that yeah, was... a whole team. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, they, they, and they're, you know. You can't just go to a mall and get pelican babies. No, nah, just, right. yeah, just <laughs> round them up. And, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's it. No. Well, no. the other thing you mentioned, as far as the, there's there's a big issue in this movie with the land right issues and, and the way that that's kind of covered. And were you, was that one of the reasons also to make sure that that's, because even, you know, again, because in taking place in the 50s, still very relevant mm. to the things that are going on today. Is that oh, part absolutely. of the reason? Yeah. Yeah, I think, and I mean, that's, look, I, I was impressed with the way they'd kind of been able to do that, and it's a it's a global discussion, really. Um, I think, I'm not sure the genesis of that, where the, you know, that was something that they were, they tried to kind of figure out around wanting to, you know, reimagine the story yeah. or kind of what came first, but um, I thought it was an interesting perspective to kind of take and, and super relevant and real, and I mean, it, it just, you know, it, that's... 
it's a necessary discussion. Absolutely. Did you guys talk about it on set, how you felt about land conservation or hunting, your personal beliefs at all? Uh, I mean, there wasn't specific discussions at all, really. I think f generally, the, the the you know, we probably had shared opinions on it. I mean, it's, you know, look, hunting and that kind of thing is, look, there's a lot of different ways to kind of break that down. There's, you know, a lot of ways hunting can be conservation. Um, and, you know, I think it takes a, you know, deep understanding of what that means to kind of be able to accept that. Uh, poaching, you know, or like killing, you know, right. innocent animals, it's a, di you know, it's, well, it's a completely different thing. Uh, entirely so you know I mean look I didn't grow up in that environment and I look I have a kind of mixed relationship with it myself um, but I don't think it's uh, as black and white as kind of you know did you grow up close to where this coast this part of no the this is uh, all set in South Australia okay. and we shot on the location where the where you know pretty much where it's set oh wow yeah we had special permission to from uh, from the traditional owners of the land the non duty people who were uh, amazing in letting us kind of shoot out there because the the beach we shot on is like protected uh and it's i mean that's the crazy shit when you see you know you're you're literally in like a sanctuary for wildlife at wow. the time and and we got the pelicans over here there's a wild flock just over there like all the homies out on the water being like yo <laughs> split right. it dude what right. are you guys doing out there? right exactly. and they would they'd get intrigued and kind of like scope out their friends and yeah, be like, who yeah, are these guys? yeah, this is yeah. whack. Yeah. We had one pelican go uh, go AWOL for a couple of hours one day. <laughs> Where did it go? They were doing like a flight piece, you know. And yeah. it was like, you know, they're trained, like, you know, they're going to come back and I can't remember which one it was. There was about four they yeah. used as main kind of picture pelicans and, um, yeah, there was just, just took off. I got to set and there was just a bit of like commotion kind of going around and a few people come We of lost the, Harry! Yeah. Harry the Pelican is gone! <laughs> Dude, a few people were just like kind of walking up the thing, doing this, and we're like, I'm like, what's cracking? And they're like, oh, there's some um, lost a Pelican. <laughs> oh my god. And I was like, really? And there's like everyone's, you know, there's kind of like kind of got to respect the atmosphere as well. Like no one's trying to freak out. Yeah. But you know, we're out on like a isolated peninsula. Right. And I mean, that would have, you know... <laughs> you don't want to get lost that's or not, eaten by something. Yeah, yeah. And that's not cool. No, I mean, no, especially yeah. a trained pelican. It's yeah. not, I mean, you have to have a, a special person right. training yeah. the pelican, then he loses It's like it. the dude that jumped the wall in the batch. Totally. He's, done, he's gone. gone. Um, yeah, you know, I want to sh shift for a second, too, because there was something on, on Business Insider that you were on, uh, and you had given the quote when they asked you about the Suicide Squad. Oh, uh, yeah. And you had said that we're, you're, we're getting ready to shoot in a few months' time, and there's really not much you can reveal about it, but you'll be seeing Boomerang back for sure. Mm. So... So when, I wanted to ask you about this because Boomerang, obviously I'm not, not details about the movie. I'm not going to want to get you in trouble and stuff. But as far as the um, the movie and the, you hear you're the, Margot Robbie's going to come back for a limited role. Will Smith not coming back. Um, I don't think anyone really knows what's going on. No one knows what's going on. Like, okay. I, don't think, I don't think anything you read online is going to clear it up. And nothing I can tell you today is going to give you clear that up. Too. <laughs> Do you, Why does nobody know what's going on? I don't know. I think it's just one of those things these days. Oh, I mean, people know what's going on. I just don't think anyone else knows what's going right. on. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? People, who are the people who do people know? Studio people know who's going on. We, we don't know. read the movie. Right. And people on James Gunn's team know who's got, no, it's got what's going yeah. on. Have you met with James Gunn yet? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. James. Okay. And uh, I think it's just one of those things these days. It's, look, studios are very protective over stuff. We know the Suicide Squad thing was something that was in the pipeline for a bit and was up and down and certain people were involved and not. And, and so I think, you know, I think there's probably room for changes still to be made yet. I don't know. And it's just kind of like, you know, I don't want to take responsibility for letting any cats out of bags. Yeah. I, it's, I also don't know who's sensitive around what kind of things I think being you revealed. Used the wrong metaphor there. You yeah. let the pelican out. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's gone. Well, yeah. But uh, yeah, man, it's just kind of one of those things. And I felt a bit weird the other day when I dropped that because. I mean, it was funny. I was just like saying, yeah, I mean, I'm coming back. And I don't know. I couldn't even remember if I wasn't supposed to say right. that or not. <laughs> right, right. So, okay. I was like, shit. So right. you didn't call them and ask their permission to say that? It just kind of came out in conversation? It just came out in conversation. Right. And, but, you know, for a long time, I didn't know if that was going to be the case or not as well. How was it confirmed, ultimately? I got sent the script. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you knew. And that was it. And then I was like, well, My name was in yeah, it. Well, and then obviously, you know, and, and then recently we hear that James Gunn's going back to Guardians and like, so there's so much going on. Really yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, because first of all, he, he's off Guardians. Then he hits the Suicide Squad and then he's back on. I mean, I think 
personally, I think by doing both of those movies, with Marvel and DC, it, it shows something completely different to fans that always thought, it's DC versus Marvel, which yeah. is now that's clearly not the case. What are your thoughts on James going back to Guardians while still being attached to uh, the Suicide Squad? That's great, man. Yeah. I mean, the dude creates worlds. I think he's incredibly talented. I don't think anyone can argue or deny that. And I think he was a huge get for DC. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, like, if he can go and do that and go and make it, you know, a more power to him. Yeah. Have you seen the Guardians movies? I've seen the first two, yeah. What do yeah. you think? They're great. Yeah. I, have a, I don't see a lot of, I don't really watch a lot of comic book like adaptation stuff, um, but I try and check things out. Yeah. I pay a little more attention to the DC world just because, you know, you got to pledge allegiance somewhere. Yeah, you've you got a phantom, too, right? Man. And, uh, oh, is that right? Yeah. Who's a great Australian Almost. superhero. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You could t- see this is the thing. I got so much to learn, man. Like I kind of want to get school one day. So well, that's, well, what's, you guys what, could, what's your I, taste? I can yeah. help. Yeah, what's <laughs> right? I got you. You guys all know what's up. But what do you, I mean? That's, and that's a lot. A lot of people come in here too. They're, 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 not everybody is. The, they're I don't know shit. No, but what, what's <laughs> that's your, okay. You want to you want to be involved. You want to know. That's great. Yeah. Roxy hosts a show on for DC uh, Movie News, and she didn't know a lot about it. She did her research, and now she knows a shit ton of everything. Yeah. She knows a lot about it. But what? I just what like Australia. What's your jam though? What are you? What are the movies that you kind of grew up? with that you uh you still but this is the thing like other oh, movies i grew up with weren't in this realm you know and that's yeah. that kind of thing that's what like what it felt so kind of crazy when i got invited to be part of something because <laughs> it was it was funny i was actually doing a movie with shia labeouf when the uh when the uh suicide squad thing came along and we drove to new orleans uh to kind of get to know each other on this thing and we were talking about it and i was like man I think this is like superhero thing is going to dry up. <laughs> right. I was like, it's so saturated, bro. Like, I honestly, I don't know who's seeing these fucking movies anymore. <laughs> like, it's done. And like a couple weeks later, David Ayer was like, yo, what's up? I was like, I'll do anything. <laughs> right. <Let's go." laughs> For yeah. sure. Well, I mean, and, and the conversation we had right before you came on was you obviously have Avengers Endgame coming out. And I think yeah. it's it's serialized. And these things have been, it's it's different. I think that Nolan actually changed a lot of this stuff too with, with superheroes because it became, you could take them seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that that's that's what a lot of these films you guys have been doing. See the trailer today. For that's, the what I was, that's where I was going. Yeah, yeah. did Ooh, you crazy, see it? Right? Yeah. yeah. What do you so, think? I think it looks round. It looks, does yeah. it look like Scorsese? It looks he like, can do whatever he wants, man. Like, lucky. lucky yeah. 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 He looks like it looks like a Scorsese film. Yeah. It looks great. Right. It looks great. So that's what I was going to ask you if you saw it. So obviously you did because you you know uh, from watching Jared Leto kind of do his thing, mm-hmm. uh, Joker wise, and then. Heath Ledger, the comparison inside the Joker role, right? Because you've you have experience of seeing one of these people kind of really dive in. There's yeah. these rumors and reports of how the way that he kind of prepped for it, and then there's these rumors and reports of how both the other guys. Right. What do you think it is about this role? And if you can speak about some of kind of what you saw in Jared Leto's experience, I think what it is about the role is the pressure to really transform. I think perhaps um, I don't know. I mean, look, not that I know anything about what what they're doing with this. Uh, with this new incarnation, but it seems like there's a little more kind of humanity in Joaquin's uh, development of that character. Yeah. You know, certainly than what we saw in like the first squad. Um, so man, I mean, look, yeah, I mean, Jared was doing some some crazy stuff. I mean, I, I never met him out of character. Oh, wait, he was always in character. Yeah, was he really and sending condoms to people and stuff? Like, he, is that true? Oh, he, yeah, he was doing all sorts of crazy <laughs> shit. That's nothing, dude. <laughs> no, the really, con- sending condoms ain't it. that doesn't even like. What was the craziest thing he did then? Well, he would just like he got very like generous with the gifts that like he would kind of that would hand <laughs> generous. On. And it started out with like some stuff that he sent Margot while we were in uh, pre-production. We would do, like in rehearsal kind of stuff, and this like bag. What did he sent like there was like a. a uh, uh, she got like a snake in a box. A live snake? Uh, yeah, I can't remember if the snake came first or uh, there was a there was a also rat. a rat. Oh. And the rat stuck around. The rat was the rat was like a little mascot there for a while. <laughs> got passed around a few households. Uh, Did she freak out or she was cool with it? No, she was cool. I think the snake was like pretty gnarly. It was yeah. this tiny little snake. I don't know what the fate of the snake kind of became. Um, but yeah, there was a few things. And like he was doing, and it was like, it was good because it was a way of kind of bringing himself into that space when he wasn't, you know, for whatever, that's his process. And, right. you know, actors, You guys got it. You understood. You, you, yeah. you have to. It's yeah. kind of one of the fundamentals of, like, our craft is you don't... I mean, even if you want to bitch about it in the corner, you kind of respect how someone needs to get through their day. And so it's not for us to decide whether that's helpful to or not. And I've seen, you know, I've seen... 
you know, uh, colleagues of mine do it in instances where I'm like, I totally understand why you feel you need to. And I've seen it happen where you think it's just a waste of energy and it's not bringing out anything else in their performance. But it doesn't matter. It's not, you know, it's like, do your thing. Right. So were people bitching about it in the corner? No, but it was early on. We were kind of like, well, what's up? Like, where's Jared, man? Like, we're all in here. Like, And we were breaking down the script every day. And, like, we built this amazing camaraderie right. between each other, which still is there. Uh, and uh, so there was like a bit of like confusion around like, oh, what's the deal here? Like, you know, is someone's time more important than ours? And it wasn't about that. And I think him, he involved himself in that by kind of reaching out and he would send kind of, he would send videos and there'd be sort of this sort of stuff. So there was communication. And I think once we got over our own bullshit yeah. and just kind of understood that actually it wasn't about ego. It was just about trying to preserve the space because his character doesn't really interact with anyone you know, in that sense. Anyway, uh, I totally understood it. And I think everyone else did too. And and honestly, I applauded it because I can't imagine how exhausting it must have been for him to try and maintain that every day. I'm sure he gave the producers hell trying to, like, wrangle that <laughs> because they really, like, everyone helped preserve that. Yeah. And it was just an understanding. But I also don't want to take away from what you did in that movie, though, too, because Captain Boomerang, where we just talked about it before, and Roxy said it, too, you were her favorite part in the whole entire thing. You come out, you you, you popped off that movie, and it was just like, because I hadn't seen you in, do something like that before. Like, it, you you tapped into something that, again, I just, I had seen a lot of things that you did, but that, that one, I was like, oh, he's you're having a lot of fun with this, but there's something else that you went somewhere kind of deep to get that. Like, yeah. what was your prep for doing Captain Boomerang? Just like... You've been throwing boomerangs just, since you were just, like three years old, Just right? get in touch with the garbage human inside of me. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, okay. with, with the process... You drink a lot like, of beer. Well, yeah. yeah, but you're talking about, you know, when you're talking about Jared Leto's uh, process, and I know obviously you guys, you say you have a different process than he does, but I mean, there's still, you got, there's there's prep, there's a lot of prep that you got to do to be able to tap into that garbage human. You know, yeah, there's, there's a way is, to do it. Well, I think it's just, look, man, it's just comes, it's every, every role is different. I think for that, it was just about getting uh, okay with an understanding of it and it was special because with Boomerang, I was allowed and afforded myself uh, room to kind of develop more and like claim more ownership over that because I felt like I knew him more intimately than anyone else. Yeah. And even though I had written a great character, I was like, you know, some of the vernacular and stuff, I'm like, it's a, and I, I've seen it again with, uh, you know, with stuff, bef you know, other other stuff, other realms. Where it's like Aussie's colloquialism, like that stuff's kind of hard to grasp if you <laughs> if you can't really hear that language in your head. If you didn't grow up saying those words, you can throw in stuff that'll just, you know, that won't have ever come to a writer yeah. that can make things better. That can kind of I don't know, just mannerism, shit like that. It was he let you play a lot though. Yeah, yeah, totally, hundred yeah. percent. And I mean, there's times when you got to bind yourself to, you know, you, I'm not the kind of actor that runs off with you know, my 10 alternative jokes that I got. And, yeah. like, some people are, and it's great, and they're hilarious people, and I think they should. I just don't, you know, I don't feel comfortable like that when I'm working. Um, so improvising isn't necessarily, like, the kind of word for it, but it's it's just about, like, giving yourself permission to inject a bit of personality yeah. and authenticity into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you've done it's a cool. lot. Of, you've done a lot of roles now. Obviously, the big budget films you've done in these these smaller kind of character pieces too. And I, I mean, like in Unbroken, by the way, um, it's where I was one of those roles where I and, and you're in like the beginning of the the film, and I remember seeing it and seeing it again. It was another t side of you because I'd seen these big back big budget kind of action movies, right. and I think that I really saw the side of of. Just someone who you, you're a really fucking good actor, and because that was that was the part that was the part to where I said I want to see you in more roles like that. And I think that this is obviously this movie that you're doing here now too, um, a Storm Boy is is that. Do you think that do you enjoy doing the big budget movies? Obviously not for the I think it's a fucking paycheck, yeah, nice, yeah. but uh, but because sometimes you challenge yourself when you when you do well, you, you do challenge yourself obviously, but the smaller roles, what's more challenging to you or more satisfying also? Uh, I think I, th I think the challenging aspect can just come in many different ways, like shapes and sizes, and so it's not that doesn't depend on it. Definitely, uh, bigger movies aren't uh, easier, and and it's sort of the same for the small stuff too. I mean, I've been trying to investigate more roles that I can have a little more detailed work within. Yeah. I think sometimes that's uh, you get away with that a bit more without a studio system necessarily, um, because the big stuff can become a bit. Uh, too many cooks in the kitchen? Yeah, a bit yeah. of that. It can be a bit just like <laughs> yeah. commercial, you know? Like sometimes you can feel like there's a client that you're – and it's hard because the pressure around making a movie that's worth, you know, $200 million to mount yeah. 
I mean, it's enormous, and I don't know how these. You know, it's like the, the gives me anxiety just thinking yeah, about frustrating trying to match it up and trying to f- push something out to audiences that, you know, by some algorithm you can decide that you know X amount of people are going to love. Right. You know, uh, it's like it's heavy duty stuff. Um, well, but it's just you guys are the ones though too, the actors. I mean, and and we're we're definitely all guilty of it too because the actors are the ones who are front and center, but we don't always see everything. Kind of, like you said, the, too many cooks in the kitchen. Maybe there was things that you wanted to do but that you couldn't do, and and and. Because of that, certain things. It's that stuff. It's just also like having, you know, there's just got to be sensitivity around where you kind of push the envelope with certain things too. And and it, look, it, like a great script is a great script, and with, in the right hands, like you know, it'll just be set up to kind of work, and you get great talent involved, and like things will kind of, you know, work themselves out. But uh, yeah, it's just not always the easiest time. Put it that way. And right. so I, I've had, you know, I've had uh, probably better experiences on smaller things because. That's where I can. That's where I got the capacity to kind of pull it in and go like, "Sweet, I can. I know what I can do with that." And there's freedom within that restriction. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's like kind of yeah. There's more room to move without having so many toys. Yeah, that's right. You <laughs> mentioned great scripts, so I have to ask because you said it was sent to you. What do you think of the Suicide Squad script? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you surprised by anything in it? Yeah, I was surprised by everything. <laughs> oh, okay. See, that's 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 someone who just you talk about superpowers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have to ask. You know of what? Of course. But he hit you. He hit you with a boomerang. You got okay. any? Uh, you got any good Bruce Willis stories from? Because uh, listen, Die Hard's my favorite franchise around. Yeah. It's it's that's my thing. Bruce is great. I uh, I mean uh, stories. Uh, you hear mixed things about him though. Sometimes you hear mixed things. There were some some actors say that he was he, he's great. He was inviting. And the others are just like he, he gave me nothing. Right. You, you didn't you didn't see that. I had stuff? fun with Bruce. I mean, I was so green back then too. Yeah. You know, it was only like my second or third movie, and uh, it was. I mean, that talk about like look. I had a great interaction. My first big thing was Jack Reacher, and we got mm-hmm. to like crash a bunch of shit, and I'm doing <laughs> car chases with Pittsburgh. Tom Cruise and all yeah. that kind of crazy. Yeah, it was wild. Yeah. Um, but going on to Die Hard, I mean, that was the first time I kind of felt like, oh, shit, you know, you've got a responsibility here to kind of uphold a legacy, right? Yeah. And and so it was kind of like a bit of a tricky thing. Um, but he was cool, man. I mean, we didn't hang out. Right. You know, he just had a baby at yeah. the time. Uh, there wasn't a lot of, like... Go out and rip some. Yeah, yeah, extracurricular activity, <laughs> right. yeah. Uh, which is probably where the stories... Yeah. The, the, the good ones really come from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to go back on something you just said, though, too, because like you said, you got thrown into it like right off the bat, man, with, with Jack Reacher, Die Hard, like all these movies to where I think a lot of times like actors, and I'd like to get your opinion on this, a lot of times act, some actors, because of the system, are thrown into like – this is your. This is going to be your star. This mm-hmm. is the guy, and I think there's a lot of pressure on people like that too. Because, like I said, when I first had heard of you, I saw you in these roles, and then when I saw you in the movies Unbroken, and you did a movie with Russell Crowe mm-hmm. that I that I that I saw as well too, and I said, this is a different side of someone that I didn't see before. Then Suicide Squad comes out. Is it a lot of pressure, and is it almost too much at times to, to be thrown into it at first? I mean, like, it's, that's, I can't imagine. Like you said, your first or second role, and you're like, oh, you got to work with this star and this star. And you're like, dude. It was good. I mean, ultimately, it was good. It was good training, man. I, I'm glad I, I wasn't. I say this, though. It's kind of funny. I mean, some things that, like, really fucking blow up, yeah. I think, would just be hard to deal with if you are if you haven't been around it too long. Right. You know? And your level of commitment ends up being six films. And it's, you know, you know the kind of franchise I'm of talking course, about. Sure. It's, like, it's, it's kind of like Divergent, sh- though, isn't that? Yeah. Like- you know, and I'm sure Shay and Theo and the guys that had to do it, like, you know, a couple more than I did was starting to feel that way. I mean, I got off in the second one, and it was only a couple of weeks' work, so it was all good. Bro. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, look, I, I I think it is a little bit of pressure. I don't know. It's also kind of easy at times as well. I don't take it home too much with me. I mean, honestly, I find the hardest part about this job is the sh- like the space in between, yeah, and trying to find good stories to tell and right. trying to be the right choice for those stories, you know what I mean? And so um, in a lot of ways, the work is easy. It's yeah. f- just playtime. And I mean, it's I'm incredibly grateful for all of it and the opportunities that I've had. Like, I don't overlook any of that. Um, so I don't really look at it as something that's too tough. It's just, you know, the pressure is on at times. But if you, you know, if you show up ready to kind of get busy, then... As an Aussie, figure it out. What's the most difficult part about doing an American or an English, like an English accent or our American accent? What? Because 
I try to do an Australian accent all the time, and it's I got serious. a bunch of it's, it's yeah, you got? Yeah. fucking spiders, mate. It's yeah. Yeah. fucking spiders. <laughs> How was it? Any it's good? Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, gave me about four it's, 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 I mean, I gotta give you. I mean, I'm not. Again, it's you know, I, I just. You that's how I like. I started. Red like a tomato. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good. I mean, I don't want to do it in front of us. No, but I'm saying, what's the hardest part for if you're doing? I think just staying consistent and I, like I'll stay in it all day yeah. when I'm in it. I didn't used to, um, but it's like you got to. It's training and practice and like brushing up and always working with a coach yeah. particularly like just le- like going into a movie I did a f- this quirky little comedy last year that's uh, going to Tribeca called Buffaloed and I had to do a buffalo accent oh yeah which was like I was like okay yeah. here we go you know what I mean and like to, but that, that's the fun part you know yeah. I haven't had to do too many like regional American ones um but yeah, it's it's weird, and I notice now, like after being around a couple of years and living here for like five or so, like sometimes it comes home with me, and I, I there's times that I'm accepting that, and it's times that I'm like, no, fuck that, I got to <laughs> keep it broad, <laughs> mate. And, 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 and you get a chance to do it again in, in Storm Boy, guys. Let her, and just let everybody know it is April fifth. The movie comes out. It's Storm Boy, Jai Courtney. Thank you so thank much you for guys. joining us, yeah, my man. Appreciate awesome. it. Fun, and we look forward to seeing uh, if you pop up in the Suicide Squad. Movie. Right on. All yeah. right, guys. Check. All right, so hey, thank. thank Thank you guys for joining us on Collider Live. Fun week so far, and we're back again tomorrow. Make sure that you join us. And same thing, go to Spotify, do the Apple Podcast, do everything I do, subscribe to this channel, and head on over to the podcast channel on YouTube and get those clips. We'll see you tomorrow. I love being drunk on a mountain in a hot tub.